Evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening again. We want to welcome you guys back to the Black Belt Experience. Man, we already having a good time before the show, and we're just glad to be back on again. Duck, man, don't take the hat off, man. Let people see the brim, man. Let, let them see what you're rocking. No. Yeah. <laughs> but good turn man. that head up. <laughs> but yeah, back. Larry, get him, Larry. Come on. Larry. <laughs> <laughs> A double dog day. <laughs> but now nah, it's I'm good, chill to out today. good to be on, be back. Uh man, I'm back back up north. So got here yesterday. It was a 60 degree difference from done Fort Pope in the morning at 80, 85 degrees. Getting up here is 25 degrees. Just a big difference. Uh Miss Joyce Jones, she said hello everyone. Hey, how you doing? How you doing, hey, Miss Ryan? Doing? Good, good evening. Belinda Smith said good evening, everyone. Good evening to you. And yeah, we 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 are we got everybody on starting the show tonight. We we surprised Larry. He came in on the last minute in the clutch. Uh we got Duck on. Duck had a brim on, but he took it off. And uh and you know, I Miss Mary just said hello. How you doing? She said hello, guys. Good evening to you. Uh Rodney, that was, there you go. Rodney said good evening to all. The ambassador for Depot, we, we in the building, in the building. So we we excited again. Looking forward to the conversation tonight. Um, I will say that uh, I wasn't feeling good, so I put the Alabama State hat on to match me not feeling good. Uh, so I <laughs> uh, just want to get, show some love to Alabama State. My dad I did get his master's degree from there in 1979. So uh, I know they are the rivals of the Alabama a University, but a lot of love and respect for. Uh, for for the, the the mighty Hornets, uh, Meredith said good evening. Good evening. Now uh, we got a hey, NCAA basketball going on at all levels, and we're gonna start this thing off, Larry. Uh, after I do the sponsors, I want I want you to give us a little bit of spill about your experience up at the event center, at Alabama a and You know, but want to shout out to our sponsors, Kimmy's Corners Creation, owned and operated by Kimla Evans. Uh, if you need anything, reach out to her. Let her know that you heard it here on the Black Bird Experience. Uh, it is, you can go to uh, her Facebook page, Kimmy's Corners Creation, or you can also go to her website, www.kimmyscornerscreation.com. Next, we have the T-shirt bar located in both Demopolis and in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, owned and operated by Lakeisha Davis. Um, if you have any any idea, anything that you need to have, uh, any idea for T-shirts, bulk T-shirts or anything, even down to, to T-shirts, sweaters, whatever you sweat, whatever you got, just reach out to her. Uh, and you will not be disappointed. Next, we have the Man of Valor in Greensboro, Alabama. Continue to do a great thing. Uh, I will be sharing, I uh, posted on the page earlier. They have uh, the Juneteenth event that they preparing for again. Uh, so get ready for that. They have, um, I'm, I'm, I'm about to pull it up just so I don't miss it. But uh, they have the Juneteenth that's going to happen uh, on Saturday. June 18th. 17th. Uh, from 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, you, if you want to uh, participate, contact Mr. Uh, is it Torbion Brand? Um, he got his mm -hmm. number on there. It is on the uh, Black Belt Experience page. They also will be having a live performance by LJ Eccles from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. So this is going to be the third annual celebration, the Greensboro Man of Valor third annual celebration of Juneteenth event. Uh, that's going to be uh, coming in June. So it'll be June the 17th. So make sure you look at that and, and spread that word, spread the spread, spread the word, and make sure we participate and support that. Then we have uh, a Southern Bite restaurant in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, um, also owned and operated by Lakeisha Davis uh, and her crew. Make sure you go by there, got some good food. I know they have soul food. They got the number. We'll share that. You can go follow their Facebook page, a Southern Bite restaurant, um, and they're doing great things. They opened up last month. So next week will be a month that they've been open. So they officially had their grand opening on the 18th. So the 18th of this month would be officially a month for them. But like we said, Larry, I saw you was up there, man, at the event center that newly opened uh, uh, this year up on the campus of the Alabama a and University, where your son in the C Sneed State, right? Yes, sir. The, the title, man. Tell us about that experience and how you like that facility they got up there. Man, the, the facility, man, is, is awesome. Um, I mean, it's it's magnificent. Really, they did a good job uh, on the event center there. But yeah, my son, he played for uh, Sneed State, and um, they played for the ACC 
um, championship, and they ended up beating um, Coastal South. Uh, they right down on the Florida line. Uh, they went in overtime, but they, they were down by about 20. Came back, went in overtime, ended up winning by, I think, three points. But um, they knocked Shelton State off that Thursday. I forgot what they beat that Tuesday, but very hard fought game, man. Great tournament. Uh, Shelton State girls won the ACC tournament um, on the girls' side. Um, so, man, awesome tournament. Uh, just happy to see my boy um, fight hard, play through adversities, and, man, win, win a championship. I mean, it, it was truly a blessing to, to witness that. Yeah, man. I, I, I would say he must got his basketball skills from his mama because, you know, I, I'm trying oh, to figure out where he got it from. <laughs> he got it from his dad. He got it from his dad. He got it from his dad. So no. I think they're supposed to be going to uh, play national play in – I think it's in, Can it's in Kansas. So okay. they'll be going to Kansas to play um, uh, for the national title uh, in a few weeks. So uh, y'all send a prayer out for my son and Sneeze State. Now, that's good, man. Congrats to him. You know, shout out to uh, Alabama, University of Alabama winning the SEC championship to get the, the, today. They beat Texas a and So they the number one overall seed in the uh, actual tournament. So um, uh, shout out to them. Um, excited about this tournament coming up. Also, too, um, had a lot of other things going on in the area. Like you said, Shelton State, their girls won. They'll be uh, playing for the, uh, the female uh, national championship. And, and a lot of things going on uh, in the area as far as with sports. I know that they are uh, transitioning over to baseball. They got softball going on now. I know, sh uh, shout out to Hatch High School. They ha they started up their first softball team this year. So shout out to them. A lot of different things going on. And I do want to highlight that they had the Black Belt Combine this week on yesterday um, down in uh, at Robert Lucky Field in Greensboro. So shout out to uh, – David Reeves and Coach Lewis and Coach uh, Johnson and all those other people that participated. Uh, saw some pictures from that, shared that to the page. Very excited for the young man, the opportunity, that exposure. Uh, hopefully uh, some buzz go on, some players get 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 ex some more exposure, get some offers uh, that they can, you know, compensate and have somebody else uh, pay for their future. I mean, that's what it's about. And I would tell people to look at it from this pers perspective, you know, uh, when we start talking about numbers, I'm not telling people at all that um, not trying to crap on anybody dreams at all. I'm just telling the reality and just have to look at the reality. There's a very small percentage. There's three million high school football players. Three million. There's only 300,000 college football players at all levels. So that means one in every 10 high school football player will even have the chance to play at the collegiate level. There's only out of the 300,000 uh, college football players at all levels. I'm talking about D1, D2, 1AA, D3. Uh, there's only 1,800 football players. So what, what am I saying with that? You know, we, we have, we should maximize the opportunity for those who want to pursue uh, uh, college to find some way to get their college paid for. If it's your athletics, if it's your academics, if it's your ability, uh, any skills that you have, you should be able to use that in order to further your education. Which leads me to uh, the next thing that I want to talk about is Mr. James Green, uh, who passed away, um, who I would say is personally responsible for the teaching and the coaching of thousands of kids who were able to, I know at least hundreds of kids who were able to uh, pay their way through college, through a band scholarship, through his tutelage, through his leadership. Um, I know he originally came to Greensboro in 1969. I think Robert Tab was in high school then when uh, Mr. Green came, came down. No, I'm joking. <laughs> that was good, man. Hey, man. Look at he was in middle school. Now, yeah, but he did come down. He came down from Ozark. Uh, middle, I think it's, I can't remember. Uh, the, the name of the middle school, but I do know my grandfather was the principal there, and my grandfather came to Greensboro in 69, and Mr. Green came down to Greensboro with him because Mr. Green was my mother's band director in Ozark, when they was in Ozark before they came to Greensboro, also his, her band director when he got to Greensboro. He was also my band director, too, uh, when I first started off 
uh, marching, and and I learned a lot from him. And I would tell you, um, this is this is not not taking a shot at anybody, but b- by far the best band director I've seen in the Black Belt. Just by far, just just for the standard of what he had, what he was doing. And I just wanted the person to say that you know he had a huge impact on my life, and and just just for being him and. And the way that he carried himself, I, I appreciate that. Appreciate just, you know, and I, I don't really realize that though. You know, I was watching a, 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 a video and it was a, some older generations and and um, and a younger generation. They was like on a panel and it was just talking about perspective. And this lady broke it down real good about how our generations are like the first generation generation the advantage of as african american to have full advantage of opportunities available because if you think about it our parents they grew up in jim crow they grew up in negation they grew up in a different time where they had to fight for a lot of things and what i appreciate about that is people like mr james greens people mm-hmm. like uh mr brinson mr kelly Kirk, my grandfather those people that grew up in in, in those areas and i mean in those times the the standard in which they carried themselves every day how they carried themselves around the school how they how they how they treated each other how they showed respect but demanded respect they paved the way for a lot of us and i just want to just take my time and and, and just say what he meant to me and i i just yield it, yield it to the floor if you guys have anything you want to say about mr green oh well, definitely um mm-hmm. I was in the band from seventh grade up into uh, right into twelfth grade, and uh, with Mr. Green, I mean, class, excellence, you know, professionalism. You know, I always talked about, you know, we never seen our, our, none of our teachers in the grocery store. We only seen them in church. You know, they, I, I don't know if they ate or not. You know, when I when I was in school. You know, all of them conducted themselves in a certain way, but what Mr. Green brought to the table for me personally, um, because before me it was Clee Gooden. Mm-hmm. And in my opinion, Clee Gooden was the best trumpet player in the world. I, he could say yeah. you know, and that comes from the direction of Mr. Green. You know, we wanted to get out there and shake it every Friday, you know, but Mr. Green wanted us to be professional. He let us shake it a little bit. But we were classical, uh, and we all was taught to write music. You know, it was so many firsts, you know, during my generation of the band. You know, we, we got every summer we went up there to Alabama State, and it was like a boot camp. He drilled us. It was like it was like it was like the military, but he had so much class and finesse, and just he was just the beast and. I wanted to be just like Lee Good. And so I studied, I played, and you could hear me in that trumpet all across Greensboro, Alabama. The beast. We had uh, the first uh, uh, Caucasian kid, white kid, joined the band during the time it was Thomas. We put him in the middle of the field and we taught him how to dance. You know, it was like the beginning of integration. Because when you thought about Greensboro during my, my era, you know, there was the West Campus and there was the East Campus. Them few that went to the West Campus, for, uh, you know, for lack of better words, I don't think they think they were black like the rest of them. But we're going to leave that right where it is. But, <laughs> but when I tell you, he, we had, we, we was integrated and we had white students in the, in the, in the band doing my hair. He, um, it was something I was telling Duck about earlier. I don't think we talked last week. And he and he always would come tap on the shoulder because I wanted to be the best. Uh, is that Virgo with me? That I just uh, mediocre is not even my thing. And he said, "Tab, well, no, he said Robert. He said Robert, you you have a powerful instrument there, but don't give him too much because if you give him too much, then eventually you sound like noise. They don't want to hear you anymore. So what you do is you give just a little, give just a little." and make them long for more. That resonated with me, not only in music, but in life. When it comes to, you have to pace yourself, is what is what he's telling me. You want, 
you 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 want to um <clears throat> want to go beyond just now. You want to prepare yourself for the future, and and because of that, all of us got band scholarships. You know, we talk about you know the football team and scholarship, but you know, between Mr. Brimson and uh, Mr. Green, he a taught us people. how to appreciate being black. A lot I'll of tell people. you. Robert, a lot of people got band scholarships under the tutelage of Mr. Green. Uh, mm -hmm. You may not remember, but I was a little third, fourth grader running around at band practice, always around the band. And in the fourth grade, he allowed me to march on the field. I played cymbals. I started out playing cymbals. Then he taught me to play trombone. Because, look, I, I was trying to play trombone like Gino. So Gino, uh. Gino, was foul, Gino was foul on that trombone, uh, Eugene Lyles. And and so I learned a trombone, uh, then I learned a baritone, and then I ended up playing tuba. Uh, and, and, you know, I was in the band. I was first team All-State as a seventh grader in the band because of Mr. Green. Uh, and guess what? He didn't care how young you were. You had a standard, and you had to meet that standard. <laughs> right. And, you know, and that and, and he started that with just such a terror yep. because they thought that after Clee and uh, Clee, shout out to Clee, Reginald, Byron, uh, Chris Smith, Yep. Those those were my mentor. Those guys drilled us, and they thought that after they graduated, the band would go away. So they so during my era, they said we're gonna bring the little sixth and seventh grade. That's when Terrell came out there, and I remember we heard it through the grapevine. They ran out there in trash bags and stuff. You know, I think she was like fifth or sixth grade or something. Yeah, and he always tapped and said, "Tab, you gotta train them." I said, "I want to train them kids. I want to do them kids." I was arrogant and just hell. <laughs> I said, I don't want nothing to do with them. I was like, why we got to train them kids? Let them train themselves like the rest of us. Because Clee them, Clee them, Clee them put us in a boot camp. Clee, Reginald Wiggins, uh, Byron, um, Chris Smith. When you got in that, and I wanted to play saxophone. I did not want to play drop. But Mr. Green said, you need to play drop. And so I did. Yeah, impactful, without a doubt. Somebody should be having a concert or something over here. We need, we need a collection of videos and, or something. To, um, it's a shame. Well, I'm, I'm sure he knew. He knew the impact he made on all of us. Because everywhere, because everywhere he went, it was gold. Everywhere we we were like we were Alabama State in high school. Well, I mean, I think mm, I, I think if I'm not mistaken, I know the band was over 150, but I think it pushed close to 200 band members back in the day. Easy, easy, uh, easy. Uh, we because we used to be about four buses strong going to the games, uh, you know. And I remember vividly. I remember the eight and nine ninety team with Richard Bennett, Grady, Ryan Pierre, all them jokers. Man, when they them jokers was uh, they set a state record. What people don't realize is that year they had nine shutouts in the in the regular season, and they only gave up three points. It was a field goal to Demopolis, Alabama. That's the same year <clears throat> that they lost in the, the first game to Pike County. Pike County won 21 to 14. Uh, they played Fairfield that year. Uh, they gave up on, they gave up less than 30 points in the whole out of 14 games. So uh, that that team was was some special. Even though you know me and Rich Richard Ben and I, I tell them all the time we still was on 98 was still the only team to make a state championship game. But I had to get, I had to tip my hat to them guys because I just never seen nothing like that. You can move the ball from the 20 to the 20, but after that 20 yard line, you was not scoring. They had a different gear. But uh, but yeah, Mr. Green had a huge impact. Larry and Duck, y'all had anything y'all want to add? Um, then who? Uh, you said Gino was fouling that trombone, and he was, he was. But uh, between him and Sale, who would bring the smoke? Hey, I gotta give it to Gino, cause look, I'm gonna tell you why I say that. Sale, my Sale. boy. Me and Sale used to try to be like Gino. That's what that's what I mean. Like I'm being honest with you. Me and Sal would try to be like Gino because me and Sal started playing the trombone at the same time. But that got done Gino, man. Gino, because, you know, he, Gino he did his thing. by mistake. He did his thing. But, say, hey, listen, Sal won five. Sal was five now. Oh, like, oh, we, has, we, we had some smoke. You know what Sal about? Uh-uh. Antoine, no, no, Antoine, Antoine Sanders. Sanders. Clee, oh, Clee first cousin. <laughs> oh, okay. Who who went to the Alabama a and now is a principal over in Georgia, but he went to college on a band scholarship mm -hmm. because of Mr. Green. So, like, that, that's that's the type of impact that I want to just take the time out to pay homage to him and really talk about the impact he had. So, uh, uh, just wanted to say that. You had anything, Duck? 
No, I'm gonna pass my time to Robert Tab. Because he go <laughs> way back with it. He go way, way back. Way back. He go <laughs> way back with it. Y'all talk about sports, but they really came to see the band. Oh, they, oh we know that. <laughs> <laughs> they come to see us. But yeah, it, 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 it's a lot of great memories. I seen some people uh posting some pictures and stuff on online. Uh, and it was uh it, it, it was it's just good to 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 see that and 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 that's why it's important to um you know let, let, i just want to take this time too to say thank those people that are in your life that make a big impact in your life uh, i think a lot of times we move on and, and especially teachers because there are some people and teachers uh that like right now at the age that i am i realize a lot of people poured into me they didn't even have to so when i get a chance to go home if i get a chance to see them I just like to say thank you. I just like to go and love on them and tell them thank you for the things that they did. We don't get to where we at without people like that being there supporting us. And and and, and shout out to the look that band booster club with my Please. mama, Miss Lynn Prince. I'm talking about. I'm talking about uh, beast, beast, Please. beast, and and it takes a community. And and which and I and I would say this. I see a lot of that coming back to where we at. We got away from it, but I see a lot of that coming back. And I'm very appreciative of that because that's what it's, that right there is what it's really, really about. So do want to say that, hey, I, I know I didn't mention this, but I hope I just, I know this is a segue, but this just popped into my mind. Did y'all see the things popping up about Tiger Woods' ex-girlfriend? You haven't seen it? Later? I'm, I'm going to explain it to you and you're going to be like, really? So Tiger Woods' ex-girlfriend, he put out the house. She was living with him. He put out the house, put her up in a luxury like hotel or whatever. She's suing his estate that owned his house for $30 million. And basically trying to his ex-girlfriend, ex-girlfriend. She's she's it's uh alleged she wants um she signed a non-disclosure agreement and she don't want to uh I guess she wants to um say that that non-disclosure agreement was void i guess she wants to write a book or got a book deal or write a book to, to say a lot of stuff but i was like that's that was your girlfriend you was living with him and she said he tricked her to, to get out the house and said that they were going on vacation and she packed up all this stuff when she got out they changed all of the locks <laughs> smart guy smart guy but i'm just saying man like uh I, <laughs> I'm just saying, girlfriend suing about thirty million dollars, man. Thirty million. I I saw that, man. I was just like, wow. I, I wow. She did. She's not suing Tiger Woods. She's suing his estate, and because she's suing his estate, it's a loophole. Because because she's not suing him, like she sued the estate because she got a non disclosure agreement against Tiger Woods. So it's a loophole where they're trying to exploit so that she can get out of the NDA non-disclosed agreement but it's just like man that's that's uh i tell you boy gotta hey you gotta be careful who and what you lay down with man yeah yeah you gotta I, mean, be man. Careful. <laughs> I, <agree. laughs> I just saw hey, that hey, hey, i'm gonna tell you like my granddaddy used to tell me man he said if you lay down with dogs uh -huh. you get fleas on you don't wonder where you get them from you know where you uh -huh. get them from so just be careful go south Hey, that, I saw that man, and I was just like, man, what that's you said, what Tab said. <laughs> what you said, Tab? Well, this conversation about to go south. No, no, man. no. We'll get back on track. <laughs> no, no, I just want. No, I just man. saw that man, and I was just like, that's that. That right there was it was just crazy to me, of oh. just you know, just that whole whole situation. But I do want to say this: we talk a lot on this show. Um, uh, we highlight a lot of things as far as with uh, elected officials, um, and we we demand a lot of them. We talk a lot about having transparency and a lot of things. And one thing I do want to highlight is uh, a few days ago, District Attorney uh, Robert Turner Jr. made a post, and he made a post on his uh, page, and he talked about you know the recent uh, rock rock um, eruption of violence in the community. And he talked about what him and his staff is uh, doing to seek uh, truth in these matters and, and administer justice uh, without rushing the judgment for the accused. Uh, I just, one thing I do want to say with that is uh, uh, he's on the community. 
to speak on what you see and to share information necessary to solve the unsolved crime and to help close these open cases. Uh, I, I, um, what I do like about that is just the reaching out and making yourself available to the community, trying to communicate to the community, and also let people know, uh, you know, when we start talking about justice, you know, uh, a lot of people that want justice, justice can't be had unless you have some type of cooperation. Because a lot of things go unsolved because people don't have the information to solve it. And you got people, you know, and I would say this, and I would say this, and you people can say whatever they want to about snitching and all this. When you start talking, it's, it hit different when it hit your when it hit your door, your front door. Right. When it come knocking on your front door. You'll want somebody to come forward so that you can be at peace and your family can be at peace. Uh, uh, like Miss Maina, Miss De La Maina said, we need to start in Marion. Um, too many killings, no resolution. And, you know, we have those things. Uh, uh, we, get, we got those things that, that happen and there's a lot of resolution and a lot of things, um, a lot of things that just, you know, people go years and years without having re resolution. What I do like is he's communicating with the people. Uh, more to follow to see the actions behind it, but I also understand his actions are dependent on other people's actions. So I just think if you do know something, reach out so we don't have people going years and years of unsolved uh, incidents uh, that happen in the black belt. Because let's let's be honest, everybody know everybody where we from. You would not get three people. You can't run into three people that one of those three don't know somebody that knows somebody. And 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 when it happens, it impacts a lot of people in the neighborhood. It impacts a lot of people in the community. And uh, I just wanted to just say, you know, give him a shout out uh, for that, just for, you know, being one one of the few that I that uh, is leveraging social media to communicate to the people. Hey, sure. The people that is late. What's up? Uh, um, that was a great uh, uh, comment that he made, made, and you know I applaud him for doing that. But here's the problem that we have had in the past: when you have people to come forward with valuable information, and I'm not saying those who are snitching, because you know a snitch is somebody who's going to try to sink somebody else to free themselves. That's snitching. But but to have valuable information to a crime. And, and, and you're trying to give this family closure and you're trying to get the bad person off the street. The problem we had in the past was as soon as you go tell these officers or go report this, they go back to the person who did the crime and let them know, hey, man, such and such said this or such and such said that. So that's the problem we had in the past. Unless he can give the community some sort of guarantee, I really don't see anybody coming forward, man, because you know, people don't forget People don't forget, you know, um, I think it was like two, three years ago, you know, you had a lot of people coming forward and, and then uh, the people would, you know, the officers then would call that person, family and be like, hey, you know, such and such told me this and such and such told me that, that, you know, uh, like I said, I applaud him for uh, uh, coming out and, you know, being transparent, you know, with the community, you know, let the community know that he's here, but he's going to have to give the people some reassurance. I don't think he can really reassure that because that's on the police department, which is separate from the DA office. Yeah, so I, I think that's something the chief of police need to make clear to his officers or the sheriff or whoever. If somebody come to give evidence, you don't go telling the, the accused who came and said what, which they should already know that anyway. They should know that anyway. But um, but that'll be hard for the, for the DA to control when the police officers don't work for him. I disagree with you on that. And here's why I disagree with you on that. Because they work together collectively. And, and as a whole, they work together to solve crimes, the police officers and the DA. So if the DA was to have a meeting with the chief and have a meeting with the sheriff and explain to them, you know, we're here to solve crime, crime to make the community safe and better for the people. Uh, he can have an impact on it. But he has to first initiate the meeting between the between the chief and the sheriff. Well, but the, the, it's still at the same point. I can't blame that on him. He can. Right. Do nobody is blaming. Nobody no, is blaming. Nobody no. is blaming nobody. 
what I'm saying is he can initiate it. He can initiate it, but if them po if the, 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 the law enforcement officers are the ones still going back and talk, that need to be addressed by those that are in that leadership position. Right. Like the sheriff and the, the, the police chief need to address that with his people. Hey, do we trying to solve these crimes? We trying to solve these these things to bring justice. We can't be having you going out and talk to these folks that you know. Cause guess what? Now right. I'm questioning if you involved. Right. Here's why I said he should initiate the meeting. Here's why I said he should initiate the meeting because he's the one who put the post out there. No chief put the post out there. No sheriff put the post out there. You know, I don't know if he's familiar with the past few years of what's been going on. Let me, well, I can speak for Perry County and Hale County. County, you know, when witnesses come forward to say certain things and to try to give valuable information, the law enforcement then will go back and tell that person or tell that family. And that make people not feel safe or that make people not want to get involved with trying to solve crimes. And I think he was doing that though because he's new in, in the position. You know, he, he actually lived in the area that a lot of crime is taking place. So it's like hitting this front door as well. So it's like, although I'm the DA, I'm just as concerned as you are. But because I have this position, I'm still the same person. You know, I'm, I'm open. You know, he even talked about retaliation. You know, don't retaliate. You know, they're, they're trying to keep because it's hard when you know somebody did, you know, probably killed your brother or or, or killed your sister or whatever. And the state got guidelines to where the police set a, a bail that's low. And then these people walking around for years like, like they hadn't done then. You know, that's hard for some family members to watch a person that didn't kill your loved one and they walking around having been to court. That's hard to do. So he, he understand that was a, no, no, don't retaliate, but for those of you that, that know what's going on, come talk to us. I know a situation right now where the police didn't give the, the assistant DA all the information on the case. I, I can't get mad at the assistant DA for not knowing something because the police didn't give you know give her the full account of what actually went down. So that's why I say, you know, that responsibility have to be on the police officer. They need to do their job. They supposed to know up front. You don't go talk to an accused person saying we had a witness come forward and give that person name and said such and such said this. They teach you that at the academy. And the DA he has to put he has the power, if I'm not mistaken. Well, he do to hold people accountable. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. He can hold. He has the power to hold people accountable, but it still fall back account. on the chief. He right. can hold them accountable for what they're doing as well as for what they're not doing. He can hold them accountable. But how, Nobody how, like to be exposed. How, but though, in order for him to hold them accountable, somebody got to come forward to say, hey, look, I told such and such this. They ain't going to come and tell on themselves. Right. So, hey. But I think the purpose of his, the purpose of his is the fact that, hey, I acknowledge this. I know this exists. Because before him, I don't remember uh, the last district attorney acknowledging Right. I, he acknowledged it. So <laughs> that starts the conversation. That's why we're, that's why we're talking about it. And that's how things start to get fixed. Uh, is it going to be an easy road? I'm sure it's not. Or, or do you have to get rid of some corrupt cop? Probably so. Uh, will you have to uh, do a reorg through the whole uh, criminal justice system over there in Perry County? Absolutely. But the conversation. But now we have a conversation, and that's the start of that, that's the start of the fix. But what he did, he didn't just put responsibility on his office. He put it on the community as well. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. you all know what's going on. You hear us stuff, but ain't nobody talking. But when, but 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 when these murders aren't being solved, they want to point the finger at our office. But y'all know what's going on. So he 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 put the accountability back on the community as well, to where the community's got to work together with the police as well with the DA office to help solve these crimes. And, and oftentimes, well, you know, I ain't got nothing to do with it until somebody in your family get killed. Now you up in arms, but you should have said something the first time when it was, some, when, when it was somebody else's family. So he put the responsibility on everybody as a community, as a whole. And I think that's the issue. We got away from that to where we've been so desensitized to what's going on to where don't nobody really care no more. It's like this, Larry. I agree with some of what you're saying, man. But um, it's like this right here, man. Within our community, we have normalized fake as being a new standard as real. And then we have gotten away from helping our neighbor. If you know something about a crime, don't be afraid. Go out and speak out, man. 
you got more people that will stand with you against whoever you're speaking out against than the, than people that will stand against you. Uh, 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 you know, like I say, you know, I agree with with you know some of what you said, but though these people ain't fixing to talk, man, uh, unless some things change within the police department, unless unless some things change, these people ain't finna talk, man, because these people have family too, and you know, people don't want to be living in fear. But I would say this. Well, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell it. Me, <laughs> me and you both gonna tell it. I'm gonna tell you. I told. And now what? But Let's do not, it. How do you want to do it? But this is the thing, though. That's see, we have allowed a false narrative to come into our community about snitching. Like mm -hmm. and just like what you said, if I ain't no street dude, I ain't involved in nothing, nothing, nothing to say myself. But I know you did something wrong. I'm gonna go let people know that you did something wrong. Cause guess what? I would want to know. And people can say whatever they want to say about me, but if something happened to my family member, if something happened to somebody that I love, I would want somebody to come up to speak instead of somebody walking around that did something to somebody and you got families that living with unsolved things and just expect them to just go on. But the streets keep talking, but nobody willing to go talk to the authorities. Now, I do want to highlight uh, Randy McGuffin said he told, I told, he said, I told Michael Jackson some information he was, and he did nothing. And that was dealing with his son. He ain't lying. But that's what I'm saying. So I I applaud uh, Rob right now for at least saying, hey, look, come. And then guess what? Now we got to see what he going to do with it. And that may, be, that may be a conversation where some people may be like, oh, he ain't did nothing. Then that's when you go back and be like, the information you gave me is good lead, but there's nothing concrete that there's no witnesses. There's nothing to just he say, she say. So in a court of the law, it may not be enough to do any action, but that should be communicated to the families. That should be communicated to the people involved so that they can at least know that something is being done and it just not falling on deaf ears. But uh, as far as uh, Randy McGuffey case, the information he gave Michael Jackson was concrete. You can go see the video. The video was concrete, said the same thing. And, and, and you know, Michael Jackson, he failed the family on that one. I mean, he failed them greatly. Hopefully, so what, uh, what is the next wait, move? Bro. You know, right. when when stuff happens like that, what is the next level? Do you have to go get a get get get, get an attorney outside the state or something, or do you have what is the next level? Because you know, I don't. I'm not familiar with that incident at all, but um, I just can't imagine. When you when you have documented concrete proof here, and this and and do we stop fighting or what? What is the next level? What what is the next level? Do we take it to? I think this is the next level. First of all, they voted somebody else new in, so they got Robert Turner in. So we got he okay. just got an office. Yeah, so they got a new new uh, district attorney. Uh, so let's see what let's see what he's gonna do. You see what I'm saying? Because people campaign. So this is also like his job, like he, he interviewed, but this is also, he got to say, hey, look, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm doing to service the people. This is what I'm doing to fulfill the role that I campaign on. And I know he came on this show and he talked about what he was going to do. And now we're starting to see some of the actions where he's reaching out to the people. He also talked about the motive of some people coming in, giving certain information that you can't do on it. But I would just, I would, me now, I'm just, it's like the clock watching to see what's going on. I would also uh, ask the community that that we continue to do that. And then if we see people and we elect certain people in the office, if they're not doing something, stop leaving these folks in office, man, until we get those people in office that they're going to do what they do, what they want us to do. I'm going to tell you why. Because it's bigger than that. When the people under, when, when, when the politicians understand that the people know their power, and they know the power of their vote, that's when you'll start to see some things changing. When they know that the community is going to continue to have apathy and not vote, guess what? The people that are in control, controlling everything with the money and the dollars, they're going to continue to manipulate those who, who have compromised their integrity to be controlled by a dollar. They're going to continue to do that as long as we keep electing them and, and allowing them to stay in those positions. Hey, but Chef, here, here's another something I like to say. In some areas, uh, people are exercising their right to vote, and people are showing that 
people are showing that, you know, they're tired of certain elected officials not doing what they're supposed to be doing. Prime example, Michael Jackson, he's no longer in office because people got tired of how he was running his office and a lot of stuff that was going on. And, you know, when people get sick and tired, they get together and they get you out of there. That's a prime example. Well, Doug, I would say this, too. That's now, I, I, he was in office for a long time. Oh, and they got oh, tired of him. They got tired of him not doing the things that he should have been doing. They got tired of cases lingering around for years. They got tired of a lot of stuff that wasn't right right within the office. Or oh, is it? Did he get tired of it? Because you know, I have a different I have a different take on that. Uh, I think that I don't tell tell. We don't be wanting to know what you think, man. Because what you think ain't helping the people, man. We don't care what you think. What but, you but, think but, is but, not but, valuable but, information. But let me let, let me finish before. Tell us what you know. We be wanting to know what you know, not what you think. Well, I thought this was an opinion based. Uh, show you though. thought. See, we don't care nothing about what you thought. Tell Who us what you Shoot know. your shot, Tab. Who is we? <laughs> duck, duck. The, the, the hell? Little Charles White, he back now. Yeah, he back Charles now. White back now. He came out. He back. Is that the thing? Is they calling me you people? <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, bro. Tell. Go ahead, Tell. Yeah, go ahead, man. <laughs> no. the same people in office because they support the same people. You know, the people that go vote. Like, for example, the neighborhood I live over here. Everybody over here votes. So the police system protects this area. The areas that people don't vote, the people don't protect. Mm -hmm. You know, where they vote at. So now, in this lab, since we, I'm going to go with what I think, uh, he started not protecting the people that vote. So what they did, voted them out. Because we have the lowest uh, voting rate in the community. We have uh, rec- the numbers that when people come in and vote in, in Alabama in the last three elections were horrible when mm-hmm. it came to the black community. So you wonder why you don't get them services over there. When If, they're not, if, if, the, if the system is not working for you, all you got to do is go and cast a vote and change things. It is enough. Our demographic is strong enough and big enough to make yes. a difference. Robert, I could give two flips just like they do. And we're talking about political strategies, right? They look at who vote. See, yeah. what people don't realize is this, man. And I'm being honest. We, keep, we talk this. We talk. We can talk till we blue in the face. They don't care about no hashtag. No, they don't. No. Listen. I'm, 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 listen. Political office do not care about hashtags. They care about who vote and where they vote. That data on who vote, the demographics and all that layout, they look at all of that. That will influence them to go and try to redraw district lines to give political advantage on, to give the majority of certain things, right? And that that's that's what drives them to do certain stuff. If we always wonder why certain tax breaks is given, we always wonder, I will tell you, if, if you don't believe me, look at the tax law. The tax laws are favorable for business owners, not for workers, not for employees. It is favorable that way because guess what? The laws was influenced to be changed so that they can benefit from it. Those people give campaign contributions. They give financial contributions for those going to the office who have the influence or who are on certain committees to make and pass certain rules. We see that at all levels. We see that at the national level, the state level, and the, and the local level. And the sad thing is, we sit around and like, and I'm being, I'm gonna go ahead on and say this. Come on now. People don't realize this. Maxine Waters, she's been in office since Reagan was president. Right. Auntie Max. Nancy Pelosi, been in office since Reagan, Ronald Reagan, was president. I still don't know what he did. But what I'm saying is these people been in office uh, uh, what's his name? Mitch, uh, Mitch, uh, Mitch, Mitch McConnell. McConnell. Mitch McConnell. I don't know. They've been in office since Ronald Reagan was president. Ronald oh, Reagan was president in 1980 to 84. That was in, since 84. Matter of fact, 
Maxine Waters been in office since I was in pre-K. That was in 1984. But we sit around and we get these sound bites and all this, and we be like, yeah. But my point is that, that there's nothing I can be still be effective as a whole over 40 years. Even, even, and people are gonna get this. And listen, this is gonna rub some feathers, Larry. If I've been pastoring a church for over 40 years, I need to prepare somebody else to take that thing to take it to the next. Man, level. you can get our counsel, man. Don't be saying that. Absolutely. Yeah, if you ain't prepared, if you ain't prepared the next generation, you fail. And, and that's when we talk about voting. That's when people don't think it. They look at what we vote for. And this is the thing. You will be upset if somebody else is taking your money out of your pocket. If I was taking money out of your pocket, you would be pissed off at me. Mm -hmm. But we allow it to happen, but we don't vote. We don't fill out the census. We don't fill out all of those things that drive resources. And guess what? These people do whatever. Robert Tab said something that is so key. Where he lived at, they know they vote. They're going to have a presence over there to make sure they, they taken care of. Because they know those people are the ones that are going to have a say-so if they stay in office or not. We have to do the same thing. Ain't, ain't, ain't that what Mayor Reed talked about? Yeah. Hey, Larry. <laughs> yeah. Ms. Valeda yes, said, she said, Lord. from experience, the former DA did a sloppy job. And you never saw him until the case was solved. But I, I helped get him elected 23 years ago. Then he turned his back on, on, his, uh, on, on the people for real. When you lose a family member and the people you get elected don't uh, not do anything, it hurts worse. That's it. Yep. Now, what she just put up there, that need to be the mind frame of everybody. When we Hello. put you in office to do a job and you don't do your job, whether it's my family, somebody else's family, or the people down the road family, when you're not doing your job, we got to get you out. It's nothing personal, but we just got to get you out. And that's why it's so important to communicate to the people. One thing we got to realize, just because you elect one person, that don't mean something's going to change because it's a system. Mm -hmm. That's why you need a collective of people that can go in, that can, can exert change. That's why uh, Representative Stewart, I'm looking to see what he's going to do for the black <laughs> people. Listen, it's good to go around and have these events and show up at Juneteenth, show up, show up to the uh the Jubilee, show up on uh, all of this stuff, right? That's good, right? But I want to see me, I'm looking to see over time, not like oh, right now, the first two months, I want to see everything, but over time, I want to see tangible things coming to the community. That's how you will be judged. But at the hey. same point, I also understand this too, Duck. I also understand that. You may not get what you're working for, but if you communicate to the people, this is what I'm working for, this is the process, and these are the barriers that I'm facing. Transparency. Transparency, that is the key. That right there is the key. I see Stuart. I see him. I'm not going to say what I think, think because it's not important. But though I see Stuart. I see him doing a I see him doing a pretty good job. Here's why I say I see him doing a pretty good job. Because of the people he was grown by. And those are outstanding people, you know, they doing a great job. And you know, I, I don't see them just letting him fall by the wayside. Who, They're who, going who, to keep who, grooming who, him. Who, who you talking like about? a child riding a bike. Who you, you talking keep, about grooming? You keep huh? Who you talking about grooming? Who was who was grooming him? Uh, I'm talking about Stuart. Uh, oh, we know the people that was behind Stuart. Um so we ain't gotta get into that, but uh but I'm just, but Terry Sewell. But those people are not going to just let him fall by the wayside. So, so me personally, I see him doing an outstanding job throughout now, the year to the point visible. where he get fully developed. He was very for him to be a um, a new uh, junior senator. He was very visible when when the tornado came hit Selma. Every day he was putting something out. Every day he was pushing something. He he was seen. So, Tab, you agree with me? Absolutely. It ain't awful. okay. Uh, but this is what I'm going to say with that. This is what I'm saying with that, right? Everybody don't agree that Terry Sue is doing a good job. Hey, hey. Every, every, if, go hey, ahead, Tab. Everybody's not going to agree that we're doing a good job on this show. Listen, I got it, but let, hold on now. Listen, let, let, let me Everybody don't have to agree. But Just listen, enough people to keep her in office. That's listen, all. Everybody listen, don't have to agree. Listen, she works across our fan base. Listen to what go I'm ahead. saying on this. Listen to what I'm saying on this. I am not saying Terry Sewell is doing a bad job. I'm not saying Terry Sewell, I never got on here and say that. 
What I've said about Terry Sewer is that she do her job as a, a, a federal senator. She do her job. Uh, she definitely do her job to get resources for her di District 7. She do her job for resources for District 7. Mm -hmm. A lot of those resources go to Birmingham area because that's where, guess what? That's where a lot of her vote, her voting base is in Birmingham. Even though she's from Selma, a lot yeah. of her vote, listen, listen, just let me, let me, let me finish. A lot of her voting right down. Base, we're going to come back to it. Keep talking. A lot of her voting base come from Selma. Now, let's be honest. My only issue that I would say I have, even though I know it's not her, first, uh, I would say her, 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 that's it's she's not quote unquote responsible for it. But if, if we need to give her the black belt, and I know I got elected officials in the black belt that are a questionable character and with a questionable record, there could be things put in place to demand it from them. And that's that's what I'm speaking on. Hey, hey, so let me ask you this have you ever took into consideration the reason a lot of the resources go to places like Birmingham and other areas because of the censor? If you ever took that into consideration, it, it wouldn't be so much as because she's playing to them because that's where the majority of the people, but like we talk about on the show, we tell people to do the census. Yeah, but Birmingham ain't just out the whole District 7, though. What? She just distributed farms to Hale County as well, as well as Jefferson County. She do it to hey, Wilcox. She do it to Perry. Demopolis, most definitely. And Marengo. Yeah. I went to a town hall meeting, me, Portia, and your son. Mm -hmm. And and, they, and and Portia asked a question about resources coming in infrastructure. And she answered it, and Portia couldn't say a word. I wish she was here listening in because she said, okay, what you have, the, I, I bring the money. What you have to do is your part. You have to be ready. We do not have a structural system to go out there and get anything other than grants. And a lot of times we're not prepared because we don't have the right people uh, processing the information or doing the things we're supposed to do. Now, when it gets to the point where we, where the money is there and we apply for it and get rejected, then I'm in a different place. Then, then, I, then I can change my argument. I would say this. I, if Terry Sewell was a Republican, the Black Belt would be screaming that she's neglected the Black Belt right now, regardless. Regardless. What facts do what facts do you have to make you say, say what you just said? No, Terry Sewell is a Democrat. The Black Belt you said if Democrat. she was this, a this, if she was a Republican, this is what I'm saying. If she was a Republican, people would say that they are that she is neglecting the Black Belt because when we see money coming, we don't see those changes coming in. Places like Demopolis, when we look at Demopolis, Alabama, Demopolis is uh an anomaly in the black belt why is that because the i see where you're going chef keep going the the the, the 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 voting majority in demopolis is republicans even though when we start talking about people that vote overwhelmingly is democrats in the black belt but demopolis is an anomaly the same way if you look at the southern black belt county like kanaka county those are more uh, uh, heavily uh, um, uh, majority, slightly majority Republicans. When you start talking about this, the only point that I'm saying is, like I'm saying, I'm not bashing them. What I'm talking about is the black belt, because if it was, if she was a Republican, people would say, I don't see the stuff that she's doing for in my community, because she's a Democrat. And Robert, it, because she's a Democrat, if you take away Demopolis, what else do you see in the areas that we, where we at? What else do you see when you start talking about those things happen? Go ahead. I can only go from my personal experiences. My mm -hmm. personal experience with Terry Sewell. Before I moved here, I had a lean on my property. I didn't. I, whether she's a Republican or Democrat didn't mean anything to me. I I, I wrote a letter to her website, Congressional, and then she had that stuff changed within within three or four days. Her team in Selma, her team uh, in, my, uh, in D.C., Melinda, and her team in Selma has been phenomenal. I can call them at any time until when I need something done. It is done. It doesn't matter. So when it came to whether she was a Democrat or Republican, is it relevant to me? Tell that when, did she my, ask you if you was a Democrat or Republican? I didn't care what she was. Did she what, ask you that? No, she didn't ask me that. Okay, she then. Was, 
Hey, but hold, but, but let, let, we, we ain't going to get on here and act like this. I'm just going to go ahead on and put it like it is, right? <laughs> like, we, what do you mean, act like this? Listen, like, we, we're not going to get on here and act like that I'm trying to attack Terry Sue. No, no nobody no. never said, listen, listen. listen. Oh, listen. But my, point, my point that I'm making is this. The reason why the black belt is quiet, right, is because Terry Sue is a black Democratic senator from Alabama. Hey, Chef. If, if, listen, we talk about Mima all the time. People got the up and up uh, and uproar about Mima not making a, uh, a state of emergency for down there in the bins or the state of emergency down there in, right. in, 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 in Sawyerville. But when she do it for a predominantly white area, they, they will say she did that because she a Republican. And it's because she don't do it in the areas where we, where we talk about, we say that she didn't do it because it's black folks down there. That's the only thing that I'm saying on this. Initially, in summer, she didn't do it, but then she came back and she changed it. Initially, when, when, when she did a state of emergency for, uh, for Selma, because I even talked about it on this show, I said, why is Selma different from Hale County? And within a week, because I, went, I, I actually sent a letter to uh, Sewell's office. I said, why is it? What is the, the, the qualifications to, um, to, to get a state of emergency? Within a week, and I ain't gonna say that any, that my my question had any made any ruffles. I think many people thought the same thing I thought, and then later, Hell County got added into that number. Hey, so let me ask you this right here, man. Could I be wrong if I said that it based on whether or not people are speaking out for you, then people also by the the geographic educational system. How much education do these people have? Have here's what I'm going with that. Uh, that what about the area that is in Meemaw area, Governor Ivy area, that didn't have running water? What's the educational level down there for those people? What's the income what's level down there for those people? If they are poor people, most of the time, man, they're going to overlook poor people unless the poor people come together with one voice to speak out. So that that's part of the problem, too. Well, I, my point is, that, like I said before, we got a lot of elected officials in the black belt that have been in office for a long time and we haven't seen progress. I and don't disagree still, with you on that. And we still have money being pushed in and no progress. The same thing when we start, matter of fact, let's get into the guy done, uh, the water board in Union, Uniontown talking about that sewer project going over to Demopolis. That they had the same done, uh, uh, engineer firm to do that jacked it up before hired them again, but money still be allocated. Now, why am I going to fight for money to go to somewhere that I know that they jacked it up before? And we still got these same folks going to offer, but guess what? I can say I did my job because I got the money. Y'all got to fix yourself. What I will be doing is I'll be talking to folks about, guess what? We need to get somebody in the office so we get some results. Return on these as a result. Me, I don't give a crap if you're a Republican, Democrat, libertarian uh if you a jedi master if you got done a mandalorian i don't care who you are as long as you get results my yep. point is the people to just be real if she was a republican people would be screaming for her to be out of office if who was a republican they would, they would say she's not doing it if who talking about terry sewell terry we sewell. really can't base an argument on ill when we have no facts or we have nothing you do it all the time bro you do it all the time, but you you present your. Oh, we're like talking it's about tonight. Here's the thing about the water board. Here's the thing about the water board in Uniontown. <clears throat> Until the people down there get tired of being sick and tired, just like how they did with Michael Jackson, when they got tired of being sick and tired, the people got together and got Michael Jackson out of there. But sure. until they get tired the of being didn't sick vote and for tired, the water board, the water board in Uniontown, did the people vote for him? Given, no. given, excuse me, little fella. Uh, uh, giving the contract to the same people who screwed you the first time, and you're gonna turn right around and give them the same contract again. If okay. either something wrong with me or something wrong with them. Okay, Duck, you got you got money that you want to give out for a grant. You know I'm shady, and I got the grant before I ain't do what I did before. Would you award that grant but money back to me and my organization again? Well, That's why I said the people got to get tired of being tired to get the water board out of there. You got to put new people in office. If you want to get better results, and put new don't people use in all office. the money and got to send money back to the government. Well, I did what, Larry? You don't use all of it, you got to send it back. 
That's so you right. mean tell me they ain't got nothing to use the money on in Union Town? This just ain't used on other states to too. In Alabama, they ain't nobody got nothing to use on. Come it's on, man. They can use it on. They just don't. You got to spend it. Because if you don't spend it, it goes back. If you don't spend it, it goes back. I understand but that. But let's go back to the argument with, with the district attorney. So you said that, that uh, Sue got to bring home the bacon and fry it in the pan, and Thanks. she can't use her influence, but the district attorney can't use his influence because that's not really his job. That's not what I said, Rob. That's not what I'm advocating for. What I the point that I was making was if she was a Republican uh senator, people in the black belt would be screaming she's not doing enough for the black belt. But because she's a Democrat, we pick those highlight those money that she is giving. Because think about it. The money that she said she gave two million dollars, she gave some money to uh uh Miles, Stillman, if some other money that was given, people said that money was awarded two years ago, but it came right back up before election time. Hey, hey, when you said people in the black belt, what do you mean people in the black belt? Are you saying what he's oh, saying oh, oh. is the a lot of us vote oh, straight Lama, Democratic on, party anyway? Listen, and by her being people, a democratic, by her being democratic, ain't nobody saying that because she's a listen, democratic. Listen, when you said people, are you saying us, the say European you, people? Uh, no, I'm I mean, talking you, about you people. That's who I'm, I'm talking about. Valid point. Now I'm glad. Just as many, just as many Caucasian voted for Terry Sewell. Then it did. Then it did. You people, mm -hmm. just as many. You have well, just as many. The black belt. Oh, hold on, hold on, little fella. Maintain for a minute. Maintain for a minute. Just as many. Just as many. Just as many brown. I mean, just as many. Um, well, we we Americans. Okay. Just as many American. Um, uh, I'm said Democratic. You have just as many Caucasian people that are Demo Democratic as well. So we can't. We can't. We can't. Play this thing one not, side. We can't play this out. thing. <laughs> Hold on, let me finish. Let me finish so you can understand what I'm saying. We can't just make this a one-sided race issue when you have people on the other side. Just as many people voted for Terry Swords to to oh. be in office. And now we got to understand this too. When once the Caucasian or the European get tired of Terry Swords being in office, then we gonna see some different. When the Americans get tired of Terry Sewell being in office, we going to see some different. Not if if us keep voting straight Democratic and us outnumber them in, from the black belt in Birmingham. I can't argue with you on that. She's going to stay in office. But the, so I can't argue with you on we, that. So, so in summer, we're saying that Terry Sewell is in office because of, because of the, uh, the black community vote. No, no she won. No, listen, she won listen, because of the black community. Listen. No, not not wholeheartedly, but just in the black belt. Okay. You, you know, we ain't gonna argue with the she 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 But don't let me ask you this. Are she doing is she doing a good job? I never I didn't say she didn't. I'm not saying she didn't. Did. I never said she if she was a Republican in our area, then folks would be would, would I'd be making more noise if she was a Republican than she was. Here's what we talk about on the show. That, I mean, what, that's a loaded question because well, how many Republicans didn't do anything for the black belt? My point exactly. So if, if, that's the question is loaded within itself. So that's so why he said if she was a Republican. Republican. His white Republicans ain't doing anything for the black belt. I'm going to disagree with y'all, man. I'm going to disagree with y'all strongly. And here's why I disagree with y'all because we always talk on this show about voting for who? Voting for that person. So whether Terry Sewell was a Democrat or Republican, she would still be doing the same thing. Now, if you got some Republicans in, in office that ain't doing a damn thing for the black belt, that's what's in their heart. That's just who they are. And people voted for that position. People voted for them because they was a Republican. But the, what Terry Sewell has displayed, what she have displayed is who she really is. She don't care if you're Democrat or Republican. She reach out to, to both sides. This is just who she is. He's a politician. Whether she was a Democrat a or Republican, she'll still be He's doing the same thing. She is politician. a politician. She is, like, 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 and that's the point. My, my whole point with, with, with everything I was saying, Doug, first of all, I'm going to give you some facts real quick. Alabama is 52% um, uh, party affiliated with Republicans, 13% no lean, and 35% Democrat. If you break that 35% down, the majority of them are found in the big cities and in the black belt. That, and with that, and that's the and my point. My my whole point about all of this is, people will have a different standard for the same politician based off of what political affiliation they have. 
In the black belt, we give our we give our democratic leaders pass, and we will crucify Republican leaders for not do, either doing the same thing or doing less than. I ain't arguing mm-hmm. with you on that. And that's my point. That that is the point that I was making. If she was a Republican, people would be saying she's not doing enough. But because she's a Democrat, people are saying this is all the things that she's doing. That's all I was saying from the beginning. Yeah, now, what took we, you so long to make your point then, man? Well, she I, was you making you it. Made me went all you around the table. It. She was making it. But when you go to the East Campus, see when Robert went to the you, Army, man, you he shut up. Oh. He got in the Army. But when y'all went to the East Campus, y'all couldn't see what he was saying. I went to the best campus. I understand hey. exactly what he was saying. Hey, and, 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 my, and my other point behind this is this too, though. You hit on them. Well, this something uh, Ms. Belayda hit on earlier. We shouldn't keep people off of the 23 years, 20 plus years, 10 plus years, and we're not seeing no tangible results. If you voted them in as a vote, go vote. Like the same thing. We can play. He's staying in office 23 years simply because he took care of his, his fan base. But, but who are you but, talking but, about, Also, too. Also, too, Larry, people kept voting straight Democrat on that goddamn ticket. But, but the, the okay. other folk killed Mike because Mike, Mike would give away some time. When I said Mike was high and joking. He was no, hiding. Mike was hiding certain people, certain exactly. certain race, certain race he did not bother. Certain race he did not bother. And he was hiding people. <laughs> hey, but then too, let me just kind of touch on this. You did right here just a little bit. And I know we talked about this, or, or y'all talked about this probably about a month or two ago. If he had a sat down and did an inventory of himself. He can't blame nobody but himself for him losing. You, he can't blame nobody else because had he did an inventory of himself and asked himself, was I really for the people that put me in office? Did I really fail the people? Did I really fail the community? Did I do my job to the best of my ability? Hell no, he didn't do his job to the best of his ability. Did he fail the people? Yeah, you failed the people and you failed the community miserably. And did he deserve to get kicked out of office? Yes, should have been kicked out of office. But so no, can't blame nobody else because you're not in office. When See, there's you, no accountability factor, it don't make you look at yourself. I agree with that. I agree with that. Hey, but no, but th- that's the point. Like, you know, I I, I made this, this thing, man. Like, you know, accountability, right? And, and this is, this is, and we talked a little bit about the show. I'm about to bring it up now. Since Jay's on right now, I'm going to bring this topic up, right? Come on, baby. Come on, through. We can't get out of holding ourselves accountable to a standard. Ms. De La Mena talked about it, uh, you know, with the, the older generation. They had a standard. They had a lot of barriers they had to overcome. You see how they carried themselves out in public? They had a standard. They had things that they had to overcome. But when we try to hold ourselves accountable, I'm not attacking you. I'm not trying to crucify you. I'm talking about, hey, you are not walking or you are not aligning yourself to the standard that you need to walk in. And if you are an elected official, if you are in a whatever position of leadership, there is a standard in which you should walk by. Everybody's not going to agree with you. And I understand when you're talking about being in political office, everybody's not going to agree with the situation or the choices or the decisions you make. I got that. But if you are talking with the people and keeping them informed behind the so what behind your decisions, I would tell you not like the decision that you make, but they can't never say that you didn't talk to them. They can never say that you didn't communicate with them. They, they, they can't never say that you didn't keep them informed. You may, everybody's not, I, and that's what I'm talking about with elected officials. They are elected public officials. Mm-hmm. They're not in this position to have power to tell you, because as soon as you see somebody get elected and they get in that position and act like they better, oh, they got to go. You got done, got to go, because you're working for me. We voted for you. I agree hey, with Jay, that. Hey, Jay, Jay, I'm bringing, I'm bringing up your name. I'm bringing it up. That, that's um, what it is. And, but, and but another ahead, thing Mark. I want to point out, you know, churches don't push voter registration. We don't push the importance of liberation, things of that nature, because as a pastor, would affect your people or affect you. And, and we don't stress this enough, that enough in church. We try to. I guess keep state and church separate. However, Jesus dealt with government. If you look in the Bible, he dealt with, you know, uh, uh, um, oppression and, and, li- and li- liberating people within the Bible. But today we want to shy away from that. But 
what affect your people as a pastor is going to affect you. It should affect you if you care about your people. And churches have got away from that voter registration and, and talking about things that, are, that affect their people on an everyday, on, 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 every day. And we got to get back to that because the church was the, the mecca. It was the, you know, the place where the information was put out, you know, where uh, 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 they talked to those elected officials and, and, and plan for things concerning the community. But, but Larry, when, 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 when most of your past live above the means of, of the community, then, that, then that's the main reason why it don't affect them. Well, I, I think the issue hold on, is... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. I, got, I got to say that, Larry. I got to get I got to get that one. Yes. The pastors don't make no money. Well, yes. some of them do, but a lot of them don't. A lot of these pastors make a lot of money. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Robert, right now, people will say you live above the means of the average person in the black belt right now. So you need to, uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. You need to apologize for that. You need to apologize for that because you live above the means. I don't apologize for Lucas. I don't apologize. Get it, Chip. I don't apologize. ain't got nothing to do with around Smart hey, hey, listen, I don't apologize. Listen, for uh -uh. insurance. Listen, uh -uh. Uh -uh. so no, I ain't got to apologize. No. So, so why, you drive Bentley. No, but wait a minute, wait a minute, Robert. Listen, you that's a false narrative. Let's we, we we will take one pastor that have a Bentley, and then we'll try to that's equate right? it. Listen, we'll every because I don't story. drive a Bentley. Look. We'll try to equate it to everybody in the same the same audacity that yes. you feel like you don't have to apologize because I didn't work for mine. I ain't apologizing nobody for what I didn't work to earn. Now, if I go be a pastor, it ain't got nothing to do with what I have because I'm the done pastor. So we like to perpetuate this narrative as if our preachers are robbing the church blind. Oh, no. Listen, listen to what I'm saying. Listen, please listen to what I'm saying. When the most of the people that's still in the church. Are them same church members that, that be claiming they the, the, the them folks that balance in the church book? They them, still them the people that steal. <laughs> Let's be honest with you. And these churches in the black belt, most of them don't even have an active membership of 50 people. That's the black belt. That's the black belt. So everybody automatically talking about all these listen, these folks thought my daddy was rich. And my daddy was a teacher that made thirty thousand dollars a year. My mama worked up there for the board of education in Greensboro. With uh, Dan Butler, when it was the, the board of education office was upstairs in the courthouse, collectively made what 50, 50,000 dollars a year, 50, 60. Oh, we balling? What? I'm just being honest with you right now. Let's just be honest. But the narrative was we had all of this money because my daddy was pastor. Mm -mm. Probably let making two hundred fifty dollars a son. Give me to my to my statement. Mm -hmm. Now, not in the black belt, but the black belt ain't the world. Hey, but. But, hey, but I've you been to a lot of churches. Now you got some that's doing it like this. Some DC. Oh, we gotta say a little bit more than some. I mean, oh, you, Robert, you, you got a vast majority. <laughs> I don't have a, listen, Come on now, Robert, Robert, Robert. If there's a thousand churches, it may be fifty churches that you're talking about where people have that. Uh, uh, the pastor had the money that you're talking Only about out of a thousand churches. Thousand? Yes. Okay, Robert. How many churches you think in Greensboro, Demopolis, Union? None town, in Greensboro, Demopolis. None of the Bible. No, I no. already said. How that. many churches? How many churches you think is in Marion? Is in Demopolis? Is in Greensboro? Is in Utah? Is in in in, 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 in the Black Belt region? How many churches? Over a thousand. Right. How many pastors in that Black Belt area do you think got that type of well, money? We, we, but I'm, I'm 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 agreeing with you. Not in the Black Belt yeah. area, but that the but, Black Belt is not the world. But Robert, it's those. What people don't realize is the the church, the TD Jaces, those those big mega churches are not the normal. Not at it's all. Not in the black belt, but in DC, it is. But, but pastors in the New black York belt, California pastors in the black is. belt, get that same same stereotype that 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 TD Jakes and Creflo got. Y'all getting all this money, but a lot of them struggling to make ends meet. They put but, more in the church than they get back. But Larry, come on, dude. Listen, my brother, Larry, I'm my gonna say brother do the same thing. I, I, I'm not disagreeing with you. My brother put more in the church than 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 than, than, he, get, than he get paid. He right. put a portion of his salary, but he works all day. But I know about a good fifty pastors, not in the black belt because the black belt is a poor region. But I know across the world, I know about fifty pastors that that make above the medium of the church. I, yeah. I know quite a few. I know quite a but few. This my my point. My well, point. To, to, my point to, to all of that is 
I just hear this narrative. People like they love to use TD Jakes, right? All TD Jakes. People don't realize TD Jakes is a New York Times best, multiple New York Times bestselling author. You got money coming in from everywhere. But, but people don't. But listen, people don't say nothing about how much money uh, Stephen King got. People don't say nothing about how much money J.R. Tolkien got for Harry Potter's book. She's a billionaire. But because you're a pastor, you can't make money. Because you're a pastor, you can't have other things on the side. They will assume that you steal it. But the same way, I'm saying, I ain't apologizing for me serving over 20 years in the military and securing my bag. I ain't apologizing to nobody. You can think whatever you want to think. But back to what Lemma was talking about with... Uh, um, uh, advocating in the, in the church, the church should be advocating for social justice. They should be advocating for all those things. I can I can name out so about, about nine scriptures that talk about uh, advocating. One Isaiah ten one and two says, "Woe to those who make unjust law, to those who is to those who issue oppressive decrees, to deprive the poor of the of their rights and withhold justice from the oppressed of my people." making widows their prey and robbing the fathers. That's just one. I can spill out eight more. But don't y'all see what that says? So if we are not doing that as a church, making sure that people are actually registered or voting, uh, uh, making sure they vote, and then don't get in there telling them what they need to vote for, but get them to say, hey, go exercise your right to vote. I'm telling you, that's what we should be doing. It's certain things, you know, uh, say, I don't know if you're familiar with a 501c3 chef. Yeah. So, so it's certain things that the church will speak on, and it's certain things that they're not going to speak on. You know, when it comes to anything dealing with the government or anything dealing with politics, takes on. That's what I want to say about that. But though you have certain pastors out there that are doing their job, and there shouldn't be no limit to the money that they that they make because they are serving the people. They 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 going over and beyond their duty as a pastor so so to say that that uh this pastor shouldn't get this income or he shouldn't be paid this and he's doing everything that he should be doing i, I think that's absurd was you have a lot of pastors that ain't doing nothing they ain't doing nothing for the people they ain't serving the people they ain't serving the community Shit, they ain't even serving themselves but they complaining about money and people giving the money so i would say man Pay people, pay people according to what they do. And the way Noel Jones and T.D. Jakes and all those guys made their church bigger is because they invested in land. They invested in an apartment building. They got the church. They got the deacon and they got the trustee board. They got all them people in to buy into their idea. They started buying land, buildings, apartment buildings. They started investing the church money. They didn't just put the church money inside of the bank to where it, it would grow the bare minimum. They started investing the church money into other things. They started investing their money as well. So that way that church can grow as a whole. Yeah. Uh, I, I do want to uh, segue and bring this up and bring on this topic. Uh, we talked about uh, police officers earlier, but I do want to talk about, you know, and, and, and Robert, we, you said about uh, living above the means, but it's hard to live within your means when we still got mo most of our public positions making at minimum wage or a little bit above minimum wage. Uh, and and that's like the um, the if I'm not mistaken, I think like the garbage workers, garbage truck workers in in, in Greensboro, Hale County, they make like minimum wage. I don't know if they get benefits or something, but. That, that's something that we 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 should be able to be willing as a community to pay the money to be able to, to, to pay these people a decent wage. Because guess what? When people get compensated appropriately, you have a better quality service. Yes, sir. absolutely. Absolutely. And I'm not talking about, listen, I'm not talking about, hey, let's, you know, give people $30 an hour from, from $10, $30. But I'll tell you, it's hard to it's hard to take care of your family when when you are. Uh, um, you making a minimum wage or less than minimum wage? Hey, but those chef is it it, it 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 is hard to give people this money when you got a lot of the taxpayers spending their money out of town and they're not spending it within Greensboro. They're not buying gas in Greensboro. They're not buying grocery in Greensboro. They're taking their dollars outside of Greensboro. That's hard. 
but then also too, you had a chance to capitalize off of that during the pandemic. The government, in fact, I want to say the same lady we was talking about, Sewer gave them so many millions of dollars, man. And and the probate judge, he could have capitalized off of that. He had a chance to go over and beyond. He could have put that money, like you said, the sanitation worker. He could have put that money over there. I mean, it's so much he could have did with it because you ain't got enough taxpayers spending their money in Greensboro to really just afford to give people raises like how we feel they should. But because he failed that opportunity, man, the only, like you said, the only somebody who really suffering right now is sanitation work because I, I think they're at the bottom of the totem pole. But their job is the hardest, the dirtiest, and the dangerous, and the most dangerous other than a police officer. Well, with the city, that's something the city councilman, city council, or uh, and the people that's uh, uh, on the uh, county commissioners can can address and really bring that up because this is the type of stuff that you're thinking about, right? Um, I don't, and and also too, we got to give our people some incentive to spend their money at home, right? We can't just say, hey, because I'm telling you right now, if 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 I'm if I'm working in Tuscaloosa or working up there at the Mercedes Benz plant. And gas is 15 cent lower than it is uh in Greensboro. I'm gonna okay, fill up in Tuscaloosa. And you passing by Sam's or Walmart. Yeah, Sam, you know, I, I'm, just being, I'm, I'm, I, I'm just being I'm being honest with you. And you know, the yeah, same I, thing. I didn't understand I didn't understand why. Well, I know why, but I ain't understand. <laughs> I know why now, but I ain't understand. At that why time Green you didn't understand. I ain't understand why Green Bay never had no Walmart. It was just normal to go to the mop. The mop list is where the mop is at for a lot of money coming from Uniontown, Greens, by all these other places going over there spending their money at at uh at um at Walmart. Then then the mop is remember when we was in school, the mop had all the fast food restaurants. We didn't get McDonald's, we had churches. That was pretty much it. We had Christmas churches, chick. Christmas chick, Ward. Save, Wards, Save Mo. Just be honest with you. But I think I think that comes I think that comes partially from ignorance too, because well, I think it was not ignorant. It's them protecting their buddies, the mom and pop stores. Exactly. I, you know, the thing is, because here in the mob list, people don't know the importance of going to a mom and pop store, because when it, when the stuff goes away, if you don't support them, everything that comes in the mob list, you know, for me, I didn't do this all. I didn't do this my whole life. I just learned, you know, I growing abroad expanding my mind. So for me, when something comes here, I make it my civic duty to support it. Because if you don't support it, it will go away. You know, sometimes is it the best? Mm, no, but uh, but it ain't the worst. But we, but that's that's why this, this town can continuously grow because we feed money into it. Greens were probably Greens may have a couple of problems, but one problem is because they don't have they don't have anything where they can work at home. When when Greens were had the fish plant, the chicken house, the sewing plant, the steel plant, we had stuff all down Main Street where we can go Elmore's and all that kind of stuff when we was a kid. We got away from that from that from that format. Now everything you know when Mercedes came to Tuscaloosa, everybody started moving. It's just like for me when I first moved here, everybody moved to Malville. They said, "Tab, you want to move to Malville because that's where it's at." So Malville don't even have a hospital. I have a, a a terminal illness. Why would I go and pay the the uh, the property taxes equivalent to Tuscaloosa and live in Malibu and they only got like two or three gas stations in the strip and you and and I can't have the amenities that I need. I go to a city and this is something that I would not wouldn't talk to me as a kid. This is something that I learned as an adult. I when I move somewhere, I move somewhere because there's a first thing called first responders and public service. Those people work for you. That's why you pay your taxes every day. You pay your taxes every day and your taxes in your store. So you have to support the, support the economy in your area. That's why you always see something every year in Demopolis. And I never, when I moved here, you know, mm -hmm. that's this claim I ain't know nobody here because I was originally supposed to move to Meridian. But, but because they, because I was being cheap and they told me I can get 7% of my relatives' uh, compensation to move to Alabama because Mississippi law doesn't follow that. I got as close to Mississippi as I could. So I so I, I dropped down. I bought this house online. I looked at pictures. I needed something to move in ready. And I came down here, damn near in the wheelchair, and moved right up in here and, I, and brought furniture in right behind me. I was able to do that. And I was able to do that because I did a two-year plan to be able to do that. 
I don't think that when I say ignorance, I think I said in the term that we don't understand as individuals what it takes to build a community and to build a city because Birmingham at one time was a town. But they had the boom of the steel. Look, 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 right. Money. Right. Money stopped money from coming into Greensboro. Money stopped money from coming into any city that you're trying to build up. Money stopped money. If you ain't got no money, you can't stop nothing from coming in. It takes people with money to stop it. And trust me, they have an agenda. If they stop big businesses or Walmart from coming to Greensboro, a, a broke person can't stop nothing from coming in. It's the people with the money that's stopping money from coming in. Well, And the only way Demopolis is growing like that and Tuscaloosa growing like that, people got money. They allow money to come in because they but, see but, where but, they but can no, benefit from. But, but your vote doesn't, that goes back to your vote. But see, and that's why it don't cost money. You can change even, those city councilmen. Even you with your vote, it's not the people in the city council. It was people that weren't even on the city council but that made I, that call. I, I will say this right. though: I, I do agree with what Robert's saying because, and I talk about it all the time. Whoever was on the city council and the and the mayor of Tuscaloosa in the early nineties, they need to tip their hat to them because they the ones they the ones that push. And they made it very sweet deal for Mercedes Benz plant to come there. When they moved the city limits all the way out there to the Mercedes Benz plant, they did that, and they gave them some other incentive. I heard it was like they got got free water and all this stuff for for some years, like ten years. But look at the economic boost that Mercedes Benz brought to Tuscaloosa. Think about Tuscaloosa, what it was twenty five years ago. Tuscaloosa, okay. But Tuscaloosa wasn't nowhere near where it's at right now. Nowhere. It would. But see, but, but but Mercedes was going to benefit everybody. A Walmart coming to Greensboro, it was going to knock Fuller's. It was going to knock Piggly Wiggly. You know, that was the issue. I think but people think that. Fuller's and, and the guy the, Piggly Wiggly the had money. Owners, the what? landowners agreed to sell the land at first. Right. Somebody went to go see the landowners and said, don't y'all don't y'all sell y'all land. It Fuller's had, had money, money, right? Fuller's had money. Yeah. Money stopped money from coming into Greensboro. Right. That's what I'm saying. And the ignorance of that, because because that's that, that's old business. It's on. not ignorant if they're protecting their interests, but their see, the own interests. Right. They don't care about growth. They don't right. care about growth. When I say the ignorance is it because those people like Fuller and stuff that stopped all these business thought that that would that would that would that would tarnish their image, but it don't. They made their money. Because because when you look at a McDonald's on every other corner in a in a in a, in a Burger King across the street. You won't go where you want to go. But, but that and, and the, I, I would have got put out of being the town. I don't think so. No, but but this is listen. This is this is. I, 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 Robert, you looking at it from. You looking at it from an exposure perspective. Look at it from you ain't left Greensboro yet. So guess what, people? Yeah, that no, they, no. Gonna, they still gonna go to those same things. And they my thing right. is, I don't mind supporting. Uh, mom and pop stores, but I, I'm not gonna support a mom and pop store. They're trying to sell me some for for two dollars, where I can get online for fifty cent. And that's now. But when 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 Walmart came there, we ain't had no online. When no, Walmart we didn't. was to come to Walmart, when Walmart wanted to come to Greensboro, and when Mercedes got there, we had all, the online presence really got really big. That's why you can't find nothing in the mall anymore. Me, yeah. I shop solely online. With the exception of this jacket, because this is trenches. Um, my friend Rita Jackson's son. This is my shameless plug. You know, because I, I got mad at him because he ain't had that for fat people. So he ordered an extra, a big jacket for me here. And so I'm, I'm sporting that there. That's mm -hmm. right, trenches. That's Greensboro, Alabama. Uh, uh, Rita Jackson's son. He in Tuscaloosa. Y'all look him up online. Look him up on Facebook. Right now, back to what you were saying. And no. now here's another thing I want to point out too, Chef. So here's another thing I want to point out too. That goes all the way back to our elected official within that city. If you know people got money, man, go sell these people your idea. Show them that, hey, man, you could benefit from this too, as well as help me grow my city, Education. as well as help the people. But the, that's what you got to be able to plan. network with. You got to be able to go to people. You got to know where the money at. It, 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 especially if you're a mayor within the city, you got to know where the money at. You got to know who got the money because these are the same people. That can help you grow your city, and they can benefit from the people it as well. with the money. Just like Demopolis is about to get a, a, a nice school because because they leverage they went up there and talked to because uh, of Terry Sewell. Because but, listen, of Terry listen, but listen, listen, listen. But this is what I'm saying though, Duck. 
I mean, Doug and, and Robert, they have elected officials that will use the money that people will see the benefits of. We got to let other elected officials get money and you don't see nothing. Man, look, the Mobley built their school in 1994. You know how I know? Because it was class of 94 who was the first class to graduate from there. Shout out to class of 94 in the Mobley, Alabama, uh, Quentin Richardson, uh, uh, Fenderson, I'm sorry, Quentin Fenderson, who is currently, he's getting ready to retire next month, but he's currently the command sergeant major of Fort Stewart, Georgia, and uh, uh, third ID, a graduate of uh, uh, a graduate of Demopolis, Alabama, and a son of the Black Belt. So give a shout out to Quint. Uh, congratulations, man. Great accomplishment for even making to command sergeant major, but also to the level where you're a post sergeant major. But Demopolis built that because guess what? My brother graduated from the old, old high school. When he graduated in 90, I think Theo Ratliff graduated in 91, 92, the same time. They get money. They put the money to the use. You've seen continual growth in the Mobbles for the last 30 years. In other areas where you had black people that got elected, you've seen the exact opposite. And to add to that, as far as when things doesn't work right, Hey, let me ask y'all this question. The first protest that I've ever been to in the South was in the Mobbles. Hey, let me ask you this question, man. Since all four of us from Greensboro. Did Greensboro go down when John Jay left office? Did all the businesses and stuff start moving out? Have y'all ever stopped to ask yourself why? And I'm going to leave that right there. It's a lot. Well, and when they uh, merged them schools, people got on that way too. It, it showed no one down after that. Right, because you look at you, you go over there to West Campus, right? Well, now, when you go over there to the middle school, the elementary school, you can count the Caucasian. Listen, you said Southern, Southern Academy enrollment went up. In 08, 09. They went up there, homeschooled, and then they changed the address and let them go into Malva. But, but, also, but watch this, though. Watch this. Remember, Malva used to be 2A, and the Malva 4A now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, they got a lot from Greensboro. But hold on. Let's, yeah. let, 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 let's go ahead on and tell the whole truth now. <laughs> let's tell the whole truth. There's a lot of black folks left Greensboro and went to Malva. Uh, yeah. yeah. A lot of black people. You right? Yeah. Let's not just act they like it's for the West Campus, campus though. You're right. They thought he couldn't get a good education at the East Campus. So they was the West Campus. No. Is there one, no West Campus? Listen, you had people, Akron, you people from Akron, you Akron that went to Malibu that didn't want to come to Greensboro as well. They didn't have no other choice, Lab, but their school got shut down. They flew right. Down. Now, but they hold on. talking about though. Hold on now. Because, you know, I, we lived in Soyville, so, hey, it, it was certain one that was zoned. You were zoned for Greensboro. Them jokers went on, went on to Mileville. Went on so let's just be, hey, yeah. it, matter of fact, it's the same thing. It's some, it's some, let, let's be honest, it's some other ones that was in Sunshine District that went to Demopolis. Yeah. So yeah. they did that because of what? Now, and it wasn't all racially motivated. They did that right. for a lot of resources. Now, we can go and talk about a lot of that, but Doug, you hit on it. We continue to talk about the same thing. This is why we talk about elected leaders having a, uh, uh, having the, the acumen to understand what they need to do to fulfill the role. So don't come up here talking about God told you to run. Through, uh, you prayed about it and God told you to run, right? Don't don't come up here God with that, man. I'm just being honest. Don't come up here with that. Don't that ain't God. It. Don't say it about her. And, and this is my thing, the lack of right. the disconnect between elected officials and the community. Yeah, There yeah. is a major disconnect. Yeah. If I was an, an elected official, like if I was mayor, I'm going to meet with every pastor within the city. I'm going to form a team. Because the pastors see their people on Wednesdays. This is my vision for the city. I need y'all to help me push the vision. They man, talk to their people all the time. A lot of man. pastors are influential. You know, they're you know, they're people they listening to them. They got, they got somebody to... to right. Uh, to tell them, okay, now this is real. So this was this was going on. on so this if you got people to help push your agenda, it makes it easier. That's if you got an agenda, first of all, <laughs> or if you got a vision, first of all. But if you have those people who have access to the people more than you do, you utilize those people on the team to help move everything forward. And that's why I say, when you separate from the community, from the church, I know adult friends that stop uh, living on God, but. But the reality of the matter is a lot of black folks go to church, but they ain't in tune with, with, with the reality of who God is and how God 
designed for the community to work together as one. We separated. You should have God is about have. oneness, but in our communities, there's no oneness. Every he said leader, the key thing. Uh, every leader should have. He said a vision. He said a vision, and most of all, we like so if, if I was mayor, they don't have I'll a reach vision. out to every pastor. Look, this is my vision for the city. I need y'all to help support it. I will actually meet with them. But let them, but you though, know, talk to here's the what I would say. You know, that's a good push, push the vision. Push, push the community. That's a good idea to reach out to every pastor and to want to involve them. But you sh you should also have you an agenda to where if not on help you, you could still move the city forward with or without. But it ain't like you didn't reach out. Yeah. But, this is the th but the thing right. is, you can't have a vision without having an end state. Right. You got to have an end state. You got to have, okay, where do we want this to go? The other thing too, Larry, y'all remember the TV show, The Wire? Yeah. yeah. When that, when that, when that governor, the, I mean, the, the mayor, the first white mayor that got elected in, in the city of Baltimore a long time, guess who we had to meet with? The pastors. The pastors. Even on the TV show. Yeah. Even, and, even, and even Trump the, had enough sense. Had, a, had a, a, an advisor. Trump yeah. had enough sense. Let me call any pastors. Trump, Trump even did it. Well, you know, I I don't know about the motive behind that, but he did it. He did but, it. But he did it. Right. But he did it because he knew how influential pastors. He knew how influential pastors were or pastors are. Because guess what? Them pa them them politicians come to your church on election time, like uh uh Jager said. And, 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 and listen, but 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 I like uh I like uh Pastor White um uh. uh Pastor White at uh, Mount Zion in Galleon, Alabama. He allowed politician to come, but he can only talk after he after uh, after uh, after service over. With. <laughs> yeah, you even know if the sermon, and then you got to pay to have something to say. And then, so here's the thing, too, though, Larry. I mean, here's the thing, too, man. Uh, people, y'all get mad at me for saying something about y'all. People don't. People don't. You got to pay. Believe in trying something new. Most of our mayor, most of our mayor that um, in fact, all of them, all, all the ones we done had in Greensboro, they've been old, man. And I ain't well, taking that from them. I ain't taking that from that. But though, I, I, I would say, I would say, if somebody young, forty, early forty, <laughs> mid forties, or whatever, come in and want to run for mayor, put their name in the hat. And if they decent, I would say endorse that person, give them a chance because they have they have lived long enough to see and to know what it is that Greensboro have and what they don't have. They have lived long enough to have a vision, and they still they they still mentally competent as opposed to getting somebody that's seventy and eighty years old. Man, what age what, got what, to do with? Yeah, what experience do they have as far as with government? Uh -huh. Um, you said what age has to do with it? At some right. point in time, Tab, just like Shep been saying all night, some point in time, age, you're out of touch. You're no longer evolving. You're stuck in your ways. You want it to be my way or the highway. You cannot relate to the yeah, people. Your bone, hold up, hold up. Your bones ache. You can't get out and go walk the community because your bones ache because yeah, you got to do this. Uh, uh, <laughs> if they you have a mayor innovative. that is in their forties, man, that is in good physical condition, mentally, and the whole nine, let's endorse that person, man. Cause we have tried everything else. Right. I don't want, I don't want no more old mayors for Greensboro, man. I want somebody young and energetic and with a vision, somebody that have a love for the people, and most of all, elect somebody that know God. Don't elect people that know all God or that have a form of it. Elect somebody that know God. That's why we keep failing. What the, the other thing is, and we elect let somebody, somebody know history, but not elect somebody that know government and how to govern. Government, like, like, yeah, that, 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 that too, that too. But the reason I say God that because He's the first and foremost. That's why I say Him. Yeah, but yeah. but I, I, I'm 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 just saying this on this one. You know, a lot of people ride that God co coattail, but don't un understand anything about government, and and then they get in there and they call it disaster. But you got to surround yourself by people, because you know I'm, being, I'm just being honest. I'm Shit, what you said? They cause a disaster. They cause a disaster. Yeah, they can love God, but don't have a clue about the job. And listen, 
Listen, let's be honest about with you. you. What the God you talking about? Hold on, let's let's be honest. Let's just be honest. I'm laughing because it's funny can, what you're saying, but it's I can truth. love God all I want to. But if you ain't going to let me uh, operate on you just because I say I love God and I believe in God, you're going to want to know what my credentials is. Right. You're going to want to know if I've been trained. You're going to want to know if I know what I'm talking about. Your success. And that's, the, the, and that's the same that the biggest problem that we have with a lot of our politicians is they're not in it for the job. They're in it for the position. Because if they were in it for the job, they would do the necessary thing to train up themselves, to grow themselves, to learn. They would connect themselves to other, other people that's bringing certain things. They'll go to other communities. Hey, how y'all doing this? What was your process for this? What are your standard operating procedures? What are your, you see what I'm saying? What are all of those things? Uh, you know, those are the things that- uh, Go to conferences. Go to conferences, yes. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? What are you doing to increase your knowledge? Just like what we talk about in the military. Uh, I don't know if they did this in the Navy, but I know they do it in the Army. You know what I'm saying? That we have to we have to continue our professional military education, PME, professional military education. I the Army invested in me to go to school for an entire year for Command and General Staff College when I went when I got promoted to major. They also invested into me for six months when I went to Captain's Career Course. They also invested into me for six months when I went to Bowling. For a month when I went to PLDC. For another another two months when I went to BNOC. They invested that time for you to go back to get into an academic environment so that you can increase your skills. The problem we have is we get people that get elected because we know them, they are cousins or, 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 or whatever, and they get in office and they really don't know what they're doing and they just ride their time out and pe the city suffer because we don't have anything pushing it pushing it uh, forward. We need to go. That's why it's so much stuff. You got to understand your city. You got to uh, uh, you got to understand um, uh, what what do you have to offer? What what is the education level? What is the reading level? Hey, what do we have on here? How many people do we have? The what is the analysis. potential age of people? Let me get those analysis so now I can go out to those businesses and say, hey, guess what? We got a strong workforce that we can sustain and make sure you have quality people to hire mm -hmm. if you come here. Hey, we'll work some out as a city. We'll give you a deal on, 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 on tra trash or something that entice you to come here so that now mm -hmm. we're creating jobs. Those jobs in turn will create revenue, tax revenue to come in which in turn will entice other businesses to come, which in mm -hmm. turn, it will do a lot of things to grow the community. That's why Demopolis continue to have that, because guess what? Demopolis have, they have plants there. They only not only have plants, they have other jobs there. They also have Highway 80. They also have a lot of other things that they leverage through that, that they capitalize on. We have a lot of things in our area. We just don't capitalize. Yeah, and when you got to have a mayor in Greensboro that ain't going to be scared either. You got to have a mayor in Greensboro that can't be bought and he ain't going to be scared because somebody come through and tell you, hey, you better not do this, you better not do it. you tell them, okay, I'm going to do it anyway. And additionally, when the system doesn't work, we as the people, Demopolis, the metropolis, know how to change you out. We know how to protest. We wanted that uh, movie theater, drive-in movie theater. All of us got T-shirts and signs and went down to the hall. And I was amazed that we was doing that in the South. And we went up there, and uh, it was like the whole uh, rooster building was was packed to the limits. We had T-shirts on our uh, supporting tank, and when it, when the community speaks, then they do something about it. It's, not only, it. Uh, it's it. not only about having, you know, having all those mechanisms in places because sometimes we people go rogue. You need to know what to do when the system does not work for you. You gotta have. You gotta use your That's voice. That's why Demopolis. You gotta use your voice. Black belt read about now. And, and and people wonder why I go to all these conferences. Why I'm still in school. I gotta better myself to automate to better other people. Mm -hmm. Train. You know. Keep so that's why I go to conferences. Out. And they ain't. It cost me ten thousand dollars a semester just to go to school. But you got a lot of churches that require you to have at least a master's of divinity. But. You know, if you look at the uh, the demographic of the people that, that make up these churches, a lot of them just have a high school education. But mm -hmm. a lot of them, you know, require you have a, a D-man, but then you don't want to pay for that D-man. $10,000, that's a lot of money. But I'm not doing this so much just for, you know, just say I got a D-man. 
but I want to better myself so that I can better the, the people, whoever God, you know, uh, 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 plants, wherever God plants me at so that I can help them grow. So, because a lot of stuff we was taught is not biblical. You know, a lot of us still living on that type of stuff. So that's why I continue to go to school and do what I do. But the same thing within our communities, you got a lot of people that are comfortable because you're smarter than the people that, you know, looking up to you. But you're really not that smart. So you don't go get, you know, get get educated, go to these conferences because the people that you're around think you're smart. Really, you're not smart. And that's why you don't go to conference because it's going to show that you ain't as smart as you pretend to be. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and I think that's a lot of our issues with a lot of what preachers and politicians. We stay where we are because people think we already know. But in our mind, we know we don't know. So, so we don't go places to be around people that do know because then we'll be exposed. But then you start what? recognizing your box, then you need to change drawers. But this, this so surround you know, yourself with people of power. But hey, this, so this, see up and tell. Let me ask y'all a question, man. Do it seem like the past three or four months, Larry seemed like he done graduated, he done outgrew the West Campus. So now, do he seem like he could be East Campus material now? It seems like he done got smaller. No. No, so y'all say he still got way to go. We got a lot of, we got a long way to go. We got a long way to go. He's been doing better though, man. No. He's been doing he been no, there a whole lot, man. He don't outgrew no, the West Campus. Hey, no, Larry, he got about 20 more black history months he got to go through. Right, because I'm glad he went to old black college. Now hey, Larry, I tried, man. I tried. No, no, no. no. no but, no, but it, it's the, the things that we're talking about, uh, serious talking about, like, I go back to the uh, mayoral election in Greensboro, where it was only like 450 people voting. Out of a possible 1,100 people, <laughs> so I mean, I did the math. Greensboro got about 1,900 people uh, according to the census. They got about 19, about 2,000 people. Uh, 11, 11, 11, 1,100, 1,200 of them are of voting age, right? So those are those that are of voting age, and we know. I just went out voting age because if you go off of a lot of everybody's not eligible to vote and all this stuff. So if you do 1,100 people. 450, that's less than 50%. So that's about 45% of the eligible voting age people voted. Uh, I would say in Marion, Alabama, they had about 80% that uh, of the eligible age of the people voted in their last mayoral re election. Uh, um, but I would tell you, Marion is unique too, because Marion got a lot of uh, more of a mixed, mixed, mixed crowd than a lot of people think. And one thing about Marion, if you there, you ain't doing what you got to do. Uh, they gonna call you out. They gonna call you out. Um, but I would just say when we start talking about that, you know, there's a lot of things that were happening. There was a lot of outrage about them talking about the city lines back in Greensboro. A lot of last minute stuff. Uh, but those are the things now we need to be addressing. Um, and also, it, why why is it so hard to engage the community that you've been elected by? I'm just trying to understand that. You can have a routine, or what we call a battle rhythm event. That you say on this date, this is what we're gonna have. You put the rules out. You let people know if they got an, they got something to speak on at the city council meeting. Then they get on the agenda. Show them how they can get on the agenda. You publish it. You put out the newspaper. You you communicate via social media, and then guess what? You make it to where you record all of your stuff and you have it online so people can leverage and watch it. Yeah, you're gonna have some trolls. Yeah, you're gonna have people come on, but that's just the price of doing business. Because guess what? Those people can't come back and say they didn't have an opportunity or they didn't know. Because you're always gonna have those in opposition. But if there's progress, if there's things going, then we should be we should want that. I will tell you this: if Demopolis is building a school, why the heck Greensboro ain't? Why the heck Uniontown ain't? Why you why we why aren't we trying to do that? Why aren't we trying to give our kids something? Ralph that tried they that. They voted against the uh, the the increase in taxes. Oh, yes. The electoral yes. official mindset is different, Shell, between Demopolis and Greensboro. The Ralph electoral tried official it. mindset is different. So, so, the, so uh, let, let let's put this in perspective. I'm gonna put this in perspective because a lot of times I don't think we really look at it because we live through it, but I don't think we really really looked at it. Miss Miss Ryan's Miss Claritha Ryan's walked the same halls that we walked in in Greensboro, except Larry because he went on to other school. I came over there. I crossed over. Yeah, you, you, 
But I'm just saying, and when you got people that graduated in the 60s, in the 50s and 60s, and we all went to it, and them same kids right now in 2020 are still walking the same halls. That's classic. And 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 my point with that, and the whole point that I'm saying with that is, what's wrong with paying a little bit extra tax when we know? And that's the other problem. The reason why people got a problem paying extra tax land because they don't see nothing change that come from. Well, really. Other people encourage people not to to vote for the tax increase because they didn't want that, that you know that 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 that, that school bill. They want a thing to say like it was. So a lot of us, you know, we just go off what people tell us by, and we don't really research. You know, what's the benefit of this tax, and, and we don't read into that. We just go off what other people say, and we just vote off of ignorance because we haven't really just oh, looked to see what this money going towards. But oh, we could have got the lottery because we're going to we, we come over to Utah and spend our money over there, and then we wouldn't have to worry about the tax increase. But that's hey, all Chef, he's gonna throw that in now. Hey, hey, Michelle. hey, 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 Mm -hmm. Add to what you said. Got some very from this is just some very reliable source I just got up here. That most of the people that voted against the tax didn't even own property. They just voted hmm. because somebody told them what they should exactly. vote. Exactly. Yeah, I can see that. Exactly. But, we, but, but but I mean, we we continue to put ourselves in those type of situation. But my my whole thing is we can we have the power to do better. We have a lot of information out there right now. Um, I, I know this last election in the state of Alabama, we tried to put those different laws that they was voting on, those amendments or whatever. We tried to educate them, uh, educate as much as possible. But at the end of the day, you got the same ability to go on Google and look that stuff up too. And, and, and it's good you have people that will try to do it, but don't put, don't blame that on us because you ain't know. You said, I mean, because we, you know, don't, 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 oh, well, they ain't tell me. No, no, that, because I'm being, I'm going to be as honest as possible. I live in New York. That don't affect me on my day to day living. No, 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 but it, I, I'm, I'm concerned because guess what? That's where I'm from. I got people that I love there. I don't want us to have to deal with stuff we don't. And get man, I'm telling you, if you go to some of them schools, have y'all been to some of them schools up in Br Mountain Brook, Hoover? Yeah, like Spain Miami Park. What, 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 if you, what? Yeah. And guess what? Guess how many kids that has the ability to do a lot of stuff, but they don't even know it because they don't have access to the resources to figure out that they have. You're right. You go to them schools, they got a broadcasting room. They got anything you can think of, not just a computer lab. They got anything you can think of. Got like four gyms at the school. And they are public schools. They got a done radio station in the school. I said they got radio, uh, doggone, uh, uh, music, uh, studio. They got all type of stuff in there. But I thought that was the original reason we built that. That that, that uh, we took we advanced the uh, vocational center and it made it so big over there. What's going on over there? Because that's that's a, that's a nice building. I, I was in business class over there. You know when it was the vocational center. I don't know what it is now. But you know, they're doing some good I things mean, over they, there. They're doing some good things. They're doing some good they're things, right? But it ain't what it ain't what nowhere near what these other yeah, like, like the middle school. But you got to have somebody to teach it too. And right. I think that's the issue. You know, a lot of people just not trying to come down here, you know, to you the black to right? Well, also, that's another issue too because teachers don't get paid nothing, and what they have to deal with is just way too much done BS. And I'm having to move versus driving down here, ain't nobody just finna just move to Greenberg. Well, you know, back in the day they did. My stepfather, C. Tillman, stayed in the motel for the longest. And, uh, and Mr. Brunson stayed in the little, the little guard house all across from the building. They all, most of the teachers wasn't from Hale County. Not right. Mr. Mr. Green wasn't from Hale County. No. But they My gave them an incentive to do that. But 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 also, too, um, you know, I, I have to say this, you know, uh, a lot of them had job opportunities that wasn't being offered in a lot of places in, in, at the time. Because people don't realize Mr. Green, you know, he taught with, you know, Mr. Essett, my, my granddaddy, Mr. Green. They they were, you know, those guys went to 
you know, college and my granddaddy went in the fifties, Mr. Green went in the early sixties, you know, where they could only go to HBCUs and they came out in a segregated, segregated South. So it was a different time then, but I'm, I'm, I'm a huge advocate for teachers. Matter of fact, they teachers need to make at least $10,000 more. It, it shouldn't, I will tell you, you got 90%, and I'll say not, about 95% of teachers have to work a second job to make ends meet. Well, me, mom, well, I, tried to give him a little raise. She, she tried to give him another raise. I know, know, know y'all may not agree with this right here, man, and I know our show ain't really sensitive, but I feel like, you know, teachers ought to get a pass to smoke marijuana. Dealing with these kids nine days, you're going to have to have something. He went from Alcohol ain't gonna to do it, man. Jamal Brown. Hey, Alcohol ain't gonna do it. Where did that come from? What you said all along? Hey, you went from tall to white to Jamal Bryant. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, man. But I'm just saying, just, we don't value our teachers enough, man. We don't show our teacher how important they are to the community, man. That's one of the most important person they is to the community is the teacher, man. Facts. 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 I mean facts. No, and, and and I would say this, and I'm and I'm and it's a shame. It's a go ahead, Rob. I think you know the South gets kind of rough, but I but I'm gonna give you I'm gonna get, get a rough a rough deal with that because other communities are different. And I think after COVID, when these parents had to raise had to teach their own kids and they and realized change. oh Mississippi, Meridian, Mississippi, uh Teachers with a uh, with a bath they gave they, uh, because of the casinos and stuff they gave you them gave a raise. raise. Mm -hmm. but, That's but, right. But Robert, Robert, Mississippi. Let's just let's put it in perspective. They did give them a raise, but Mississippi was the lowest paid teachers in the nation. They're not now. But I'm saying not they're not now. But they they only got like five thousand dollars. Now I'm I'm just oh, oh, no. What you mean? Meridian. My, I'm talking about as a state. You talking about Meridian. I'm talking about as I'm a not, state. Well, I remember when when it, when it came out because I have a very good friend. I have actually three friends that are educators over there. Mm -hmm. So I don't know where that five thousand come from. And because, they also used that uh that money that that COVID money that they was right. giving. Right. Yeah. Exactly. But see, Mima ain't used that COVID money, you know, or exactly. even or even the cities. You know, when when these cities got that COVID money, they could have gave the sanit sanitation workers a little extra they money. You know what I'm saying? There. But they this didn't use it when they got that COVID money. Mississippi and Alabama use the last to do anything. Well, me mom said she's been she, she she want every Alabama to get four hundred dollars. But listen, understand this, people. Understand this now. You're getting that four hundred on the front end now, but there's some coming on the back end. When have they ever gave away free money? Cause don't mean, she got to spend it. She got to spend it. it. If she don't spend they, they, it, it can go back to the federal money. government. She got to spend it. Okay. okay. Robert, Mississippi teachers that uh, for 2022, the starting teacher pay increased from $37,123 to $41,138. I mean, well, they ain't, they ain't the $3 though. But I'm just saying the average, I'm talking about the average. I ain't talking about the specific, but overall as a state. Now, okay. go ahead. Y'all talking about two different things. One talking about Meridian and the other one talking about the state overall. Well, mm -hmm. I'm talking about the well, state, yeah. Well, well, I'm talking about Meridian and the state because uh, I got two uh, very close friends that, that uh, work in the city of Meridian, but I have one, she works in Jackson. Yeah, so, but like, city's different. Like, if you go down to Miami, the city of Miami, they pay inner city schools 20% more than what they pay other schools. Right. Just because of the dynamic. So so I, go ahead. The one time they had an incentive that if you go to, uh, you get bonuses if you go to an area that, uh, like Jackson, yeah. you know, and I and one of my really really good friends, she went to Jackson uh, about a year and a half ago, and they gave her, you know, you get a bonus just for going into these certain. It's like areas. combat pay, Rob. Right, like yeah, combat, combat pay. pay. So when yeah. you see, so when you see that thirty-seven, that thirty-seven don't include that that fifty thousand dollar bonus that they get over five or ten years. Yeah, you know. You seeing you seeing straight numbers in, and then when the casinos give money to the school and not just to the police department, uh, they get uh, loaded over there. So I I I'm not just talking about Meridian. I'm talking about 
Mississippi as a whole, the educators over there get paid much more than they do here in Alabama. Well, in the black belt. I ain't gonna say Alabama because certain areas get paid a lot more. But but this is my point with this is first of all, teachers should start off making over six thousand dollars a year. That just this is all easy. 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 I, I, it shouldn't be I make more in my retirement than a teacher make with a doctor's degree. That that just shouldn't that just I, I feel that way about the police force. What they should make sixty? I feel like that when you are moving target, that uh, regardless of where whether the crime level is low, stuff happens. Just like Greensboro, in the last fifteen years, stuff that was happening in the city that never happened in Greensboro, Greensboro desensitized. Now we got drive-by shootings and all this other kind of stuff, and we don't have the, they don't have the equipment or the resources to be able to functionally do their job. I have a nephew that sit out there on the ground for I don't know how long waiting for somebody to come to Birmingham to come down and, and assess a crime. We don't have anything when it comes to what I did for, for NCIS, uh, forensic IT, where, where I can keep your cell phone that's here locally that you can go and you can extract stuff. It is a process. Educators need educators, the uh, first responders, and the medical field. Need, they need to do an overhaul, and they need to do uh, they need to do a restructure of, of what it, of what they get paid in equivalence to other major cities and everything else. I because the cost of living does have a factor. I understand that completely. Hey. However, go ahead. No, go and finish your however. Go ahead. You know, however, removing the cost of living, it should it it, it, it shouldn't be that much of a difference because. We are still uh, sowing into the the people that are going to take over this country, you know. After we're gone, hey, Chef. It, 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 need, it need to be not. It's too imbalanced. Hey, Chef. Yeah. Don't you got some cleaning up to do, man? For what? About a Facebook post that they put out there about the football field. Well, yeah. So I know that uh, uh, Coach uh, Johnson had mentioned about. Um, uh, my mom said this real quick. That is true. She said educators are the only profession for which all other profession comes. Right. That's true. That's true. Um, now, but uh, Man, Coach, Coach Johnson, he had made a made a comment and 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 uh, about the uh, people coming out. They did, they know they put out a post asking people to help cut the grass and everything. And he made a post about Judge Evans and somebody are the only people that came out to help. That's the job. Got the job. That's right. Dollar. Yeah. Um, and I know some people can take that like uh, I didn't I didn't interpret it that way, but I do want to speak on it. I interpret it as if he was saying they came out to help when he asked for that that week. But some people may take it like he's only saying they're the only ones to come out, which we know that's not the case because we've had the community come together before. I would just say this, you know, uh, in the ask when we see certain things, I would say that we always shouldn't look at things from a perspective as if somebody trying to disrespect, but also go to get clarity as well too. Because if, if disrespect is perceived, it's good to get clarity instead of just running off in the assumption on it. But I would say overall, I want to thank them because that showed out yesterday. They had that uh that, that combine, which was a great thing, man. Like think about it, man. I just I think about that stuff, and I mean I wish we had some of that stuff. Well, just you know, just being that type of exposure. Uh, which would have been very well for us, but I will continue to advocate for our kids. Um, and they're doing a lot of things. Marion getting the people, people stepping up in the community over there, Marion getting their kids ready for the football season. The coach over there doing a lot of great things uh, and very proud of everything going on. I know we went a little bit long tonight, uh, but uh, Jens, what y'all got going on this week? Hey, let me say this. I'm going to go first right quick. Yeah. I just want to give a, a, a big ups, and here's why I want to give big ups. Uh, they had nothing to do with who who cut the football field last month or whatever. Give big up to Coach Evans because he don't have any kids go to Greensboro, do he? No. Nor do the pastor. And they out there doing for other people's kids what the people that got kids that play on the team and go to school wouldn't even do. And I think that speaks volume. We shouldn't have to have nobody else to come in and do for us that we can do for ourselves. So it's really – us as men and as a community. It's time for us to step up and take care of our own. And there's nothing against other people. There's no racial motivated. Now. I'm just saying it's time for us as a people to step up and do for our own and let's stop expecting other people to step up. 
and here's the other thing I want to say. I'm going to give my time to Tab because he got to talk about me, so he's going to need more time. Talk about who? Me. You know no, he old, man. You know he old, man. You don't know what he used to be. I heard it, it, it flickered. I got, all I heard was... Well, <laughs> he said you got to talk about something What do Alabama Maine? got going on in May? Oh, the May Day. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah. You want me to talk about it? You the mayor and you don't forget. The mayor? No, I didn't know. Uh, you know, of course, the first week in uh, May, we had the first... We have the... Uh, the whole Mayday uh, event that we have in Depot that has been going on probably since, I think, Doug, didn't you originate this about 10, 15 years ago or something? Don't try to throw me in. Well, I just, I want, I'm trying to get you roses. Do you want them or not? Hey. I, I didn't originate it. That came from uh, uh, Barry Ward, Teresa okay. Burroughs, Barbara Singleton, and a lot more other people inside of the community. That's who originally mm -hmm. started the Mayday in, 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 in a, a Depot for the kids in the community. And the only thing that we have stepped in and did, we have stepped in because those people are, are no longer there. So we have stepped in to keep the Mayday in Depot for the community and for the kids going on. But you can finish that. Yeah, and I, and I uh, if you talk to your local officials, we want you to come out there. I want, we want to see the mayor want to see all the people come out to the media. I'm sure they they should because they probably have some on Baptist Hill so they can make a tour of it and, and come in and check out what we got going on because we're giving stuff back to the community. We got some surprises that are, that are going to happen. And uh, hopefully we can set the format and actually set a presence. Whereas that what we do in our community, Green uh, Depot, Alabama, that a lot of people would do over there in Baptist Hill and the other communities. So we can go and work together. Maybe, maybe County Road Seven could do something because I don't oh, know. We do so, oh, oh, we do that on County Road Seven. Don't uh, do hey, so tell what about for the senior citizen? Have you have you changed that, or are we gonna still do that? Uh, I was waiting because I wanted to talk first to you guys. Uh, the stuff for the senior citizen, we have something planned. However, I am double booked because I was supposed to be somewhere else, but I I talked to the uh, individual and we <clears throat> we're working on some stuff. Because I have to go with my first obligation. Because I, I promise, my word is everything. So I'm trying to work. I'm trying to maneuver from that. But as far as the senior citizens in the community, I'm gonna. Um, my plan is, if I can get out of this other one, is to uh, celebrate them, the ones in the community, and we're gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna fry egg or two, and we're gonna. Uh, we got the team together, and we're gonna set some stuff up in it. It's going to be really nice because, you know, our elders, that's why we are able, that's why we are here now, because somebody sold into us. And we need, and, and with the world changing as it always does, I don't think that we give our roses out as much as we should. I don't think we celebrate community. We talk about the bad, but we don't celebrate the good as much as we should. Here on this show, we talk about them both. But, uh, I think that uh, we got a lot of things. In it. We got a lot of things uh, planned. And the right? award? Are you going to tell them about the award, or are we going to keep that a secret? Well, let's keep that. Well, we're going. We, we go like that's one of the things we're going to. We're going. We're going to check one person, or maybe two or three, and we're going to. We're going to love them that day. We're going to. We're going to praise them. We're going. And we're going to do great things and, and show them that you know, that we see what you're doing, even though that it, it it might go unnoticed to a lot of people. And so, yeah, May Day, first Saturday, May the 6th, Depot, Alabama. You need to be there. All local officials, all our politicians, I want to see you in the face. I want to see you in the place. It's a good time for you to talk about what you're doing in the community, what you've done in the community, what you're planning on doing. Let's call let's call this what tomorrow, what, what Terry should be doing, them, uh, town hall. Yeah, let's call it a town hall. We'll give you a moment to say your, say your piece. New sheriff. You know, uh, we'll be giving out an award too. The award <laughs> is the award is called the uh, uh, Teresa Burrow something anytime. Um, uh, yeah, Teresa Burrow's Service Award. The, yeah, the Teresa Burrow's Service Award yeah, for yeah. those who have done an outstanding job within the city or within the community of Greensboro. That's right. Or in Depot, Alabama. Either one. <laughs> What you got going on, Larry? 
What y'all zip code on in Depot, Alabama? <laughs> don't get don't 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 start hating. Now. Hey, three six. Hey six, man, six, he don't know what you're doing that week, man. He want to know what you got planned. Man, we I'm talk just about that my spring break, so I'll be starting back school next week, man. Um, looking forward to it. Uh, my second term of this semester. Um, just ready to get over. Just excited about the classes I'll be taking. Other than that, yes, man, man, I'm just hmm. Oh, that uh, Mr. Jones, like, am ask me, am I cooking? Yes, I am. So, I mean, that's all I'm doing this week, man. Uh, waiting to get my son date for when they go play for uh, the Nationals in uh, Kansas. Uh, so I try to go support him. But other than that, Proud uh, we're just trying to wrap up this this Masters of Divinity. Hey, man, proud, man, you know, I, I'll say this, man. You know, they can't say black man don't support their kid because we sure will be there in now. So uh, speaking of that, man, my son, Robert, uh, turned 19 on Wednesday, so he'll be the big one nine. And I think about it, you know, I think 19 years ago I was in Iraq when he was born. <laughs> so, yeah, man. So I, I sit down and think about that. Um, also, just back, getting back at, back at drawing, back at home. You know, last night, hey, last night was great. Got that hot shower, slept in that bed, been sleeping on the cot for the last 30 days, boy. I, I, I slept like a million dollars last night. Man, sometimes oh, I go in my garage and sleep on the cot, man. I, I hey, don't get it wrong. I, I, wow. I, hey, look, look, look. I hated that. But see, Robert, that because your feet and stuff were dang long. Off of the okay. Cot. I, was half, I was like, my feet were hanging off. Hey, off, he was off, bigger off, than the cot, guy, dog. <laughs> I hated that. I hated it. I hated every, every Every time we had to go somewhere, I was like, this supply started over here. MP and supplies so that was a mad ass man. I, I I do want to want to give a give a plug out to the army. The army that went back, man. The, the army slogan again is "Be all you can be." Oh, they went God, back to be all you can be. So that was that was uh, uh was Robert Tab was in that video back back when they started start yeah, off in seventy five. Right, uh, I was carrying the colors. Did you know I was uh, <laughs> president of the color guard for Clinton? And, and, but, and they uh, changed yeah. the name of my home where I was raised. Yeah. Fort Benning ain't Fort Benning no more. I, I don't like that. What what it is? Uh, they named it after some general. I, I forgot the uh, I forgot the joke. Well, I mean, a lot of it has changed because Fort Lee is changing too. Uh, but they're changing a lot of it because most of those bases were named after Civil War generals. So like Benning. Uh, so speaking, I'm gonna I'm gonna give y'all this military fact. Uh, before we we head out. So you ever heard the term? They use the term for prostitute. You ever heard the term hooker? Mm -hmm. Do you know where that comes from? So there was a general in the in the army uh, back in the day named General Hooker. His last name was Hooker, and he used to always bring some uh, entertainment along with him for his soldiers. Some praise dancers. So uh, people would start referring to them uh, as hookers. Th those are hookers. They belong to General Hooker. So that those are hookers. So that term stuck on. So that's why that term hooker came. And you know, you also know the term, oh, you're trying to keep up with the Joneses. Well, the Joneses is actually a real family mm -hmm. that it just starts off and it spreads those things type of spread. So oh, I learned street. that in, I learned that in uh military, my military history class, uh, that the term hooker that we use for uh prostitutes, uh general hooker. Uh, was come from a general named General Hooker who used to always have them travel along with his man on the battlefield. So, um, I guess he was. Service. I guess Cross. I guess I guess he was trying to. I guess he was concerned about the morale of his man. Right, Red Cross uh, and, and provide MWR uh, morale, warfare, and recreation services. <laughs> Motivation. Hey, Amen. <laughs> oh man, oh man. What you said, Doc? I was what long said motivation. Motivation. <laughs> motivation. <laughs> stay alive, man. Stay alive. Stay alert. Stay alive. Uh, man, you guys, hey, thank you guys so much for rocking with us. We appreciate it. Hey, go check us out on YouTube, the conversation nine and eight. Uh, we'll see you guys later. You guys have a blessed and wonderful day. God bless. Peace. Peace.